Hey, yo, before we get this week's show cracking, we wanted to let you guys know that we are going to be in L.A. at E3 this week. And Monday night, we want to set up a huge hangout for everybody on the Fresh Coast. So keep your eyes tuned to the Twitter, the Discord, the Facebook, wherever you get your MTTG news. And uh, let's meet up, man. Let's get it. (laughs) All right, let's do the show. Yes, yo, yes, yes, yo, you know what it is, it's them kids and wives and 925s, but we are still married to the games, episode 247, mm. Mm. yes sir, it's your boy Gabe Patillo with Tim Router, Ed Placencia, and Chris McCracken, of course, and as always, we are talking games and life, life and games, thank you guys so much for being here. Oh man, mm-hmm. we oh, are man, just days away, gentlemen. Dude, just days away from what, dude? What what what's going on? Mere days, near from us like being a meerkat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, from us being together mm-hmm. on the West Coast, <laughs> together. Yeah. West Side, <laughs> all up in that convention center with everybody else, with all the other nerds. All oh. up in it. Yep. Le- just in wide-eyed wonder. I'm telling you. And I cannot wait. In glory. It cannot get here fast enough. Cut to a shot of us on the main floor as a camera pans around us as we just stare up into the sky in wonderment. Mm-hmm. With and we're just going, ah! <laughs> <laughs> right. Like right. those old videos. <laughs> right, director Eduardo. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Ed, what has been going on with you this last week? Oh, it's been a good week, man. Uh, we, uh, Sarah and I went to, a few weeks ago, we went to a baseball game that got rained out. Oh, that's right. And we wah, uh, wah. went back uh, last night, did not get rained out, and uh, had a nice hey. time with some friends, just kind of hung out. Uh, we left before the game was over. When we left, it was tied one-to-one at the top of the 13th, and we were like, you know what? We're, uh. <laughs> we're, we're fine. <laughs> Yeah, leave. There ain't no mercy. There, it's not the it World comes. Series or anything, so we're good. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we yeah. can leave. Yeah, you got to love AAA baseball where there's 20 of us in the stands to begin with. Oh, but, uh, it was a lot yeah. of fun. We had a good time. Um, it was just nice to be out and uh, just hanging out with friends, and, and, and that was nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Friday, we went to my niece's graduation. She graduated high school. It was there you very go. nice. That's, That's awesome, man. It's a graduation worth having. It was a graduation, yeah. Like, fortunately, it was a, it's a pretty small uh, private school, a, a Christian school, so it was like maybe 30 kids. So when they got to naming oh, nice. the kids wow. off, that went pretty quickly. Huh. Uh, Yo, but, yeah, like it was 700 nice. in your class, and you're like, oh, we're going to be here a while. I'm telling you, man. What's her last name? Tapman. Oh, shoot. That's, that's a long time. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> going to be waiting a while. to roll around. Hey, could y'all start the piece? <laughs> right. Okay, just wondering. Sorry. <laughs> just, just asking. <laughs> Let's be wacky and start from the Z's. Yeah, ask right. for a friend. Can we do this in reverse? Let's just uh, go by rank of favorite. <laughs> hey, all right. You know what? Forget all that. Can we start with Tapman? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I'm out. See ya. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we can get up out of here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, played, uh, as always, a lot of Overwatch this week. Um Yes. And I <laughs> I was telling Sarah this story that it may have even happened last week, and I just didn't say it on the podcast. And Sarah was like, you you told that on the podcast, right? And I was like, oh, man, how could I? And just another brag on our community moment. And I've played with so many different people from the community the last few weeks. I feel bad that I don't remember who I was with at the time. Oh, yeah. But we, were, we weren't on a private party chat. We were just in the... The group chat that if you're in a group uh, on Overwatch, that chat kind of takes precedence or whatever. And we were just chatting and, you know, talking and, and what have you. And after, I don't know, maybe three or four games, a new voice pops in. And it's one of the random people that were paired up with us. And oh, it's yeah, female. Sure. Oh, and, okay. oh, oh, very cool. Yeah, exactly. I was like, oh, wow. And she was like, hey, everyone. And we're like, oh, hey. And, 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 uh, Really nice lady. Uh, she's um, 
She was babysitting her little sister while her parents were away. She and her husband are moving to Japan uh, in a few months. That's oh, yeah. right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. That's so, like Gabe's dream right there. I know, Japan. right? <laughs> <laughs> and so oh, I asked. Hello. Hello. <laughs> exactly. Konnichiwa. <laughs> right. Jeez. I appreciate oh, you hearing man. everything, but can I be May for a couple rounds? Because you are hogging May. <laughs> right. That's, That's awesome. And after a while, I asked her, I, just because of all the articles I've read lately about there aren't a lot of uh, women who, th- there are, are a lot of women who have been like harassed playing games and what have you. Oh, huh. yeah. And so I asked her, I said, hey, have you, you know, when you're on here, do you get a hard time? Do people, you know, are they mean to you? Are they, you know, disrespectful? How does that go? And she said, this is actually the first time I've ever jumped on the voice chat. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Wow. She said, I was listening wow. to you guys chatting, and you guys just sounded like really nice people, so I thought I'd jump in. No way. And I was like, that's awesome that, you know, that she felt safe or cool enough Heck to yeah, man. jump in with the community. And probably not a game later, a new guy started talking who had been playing with us for a while and was like, hey, uh, how's it going? And we we're like, oh, hey, how are you? And he's like, yeah, yeah, you guys sound pretty cool, so I thought I'd go ahead and turn the mic on. And I was nice. like, good job, community. <laughs> Way to go, man. You know, it's That's not, awesome. It's so cool that we, we not only for ourselves do we have a nice community, but it's like we're setting this example out there without even realizing that we are. Mm. Love that. And I thought that was Lead really cool. Lead by example, man. Lead yeah. by example. It's yeah. fantastic. So I, I wish I could remember who was with us at the time, but props to just the community overall. It's been so much fun, again, playing Overwatch and uh, just a nice chance to... To, uh, you know, I, I love when we have a full team of six on there, yeah. but it's also really nice when it's just one other person and you can just talk to the person and really get to chat with them and get to know them a lot. And uh, so that's been been nice to play uh, in all aspects with the community. So that's been a lot of fun. There yeah, you, you almost need to have like a notepad so you can, okay, at this time I played with mm-hmm. these people. So you can remember because it right. just, it goes by and you're yeah. like, oh my gosh, I played with a lot. I don't remember who. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, when it comes to gaming, it's been mostly the same for me. Family Guy and the Simpsons and Balls on the handheld, uh, Overwatch, and then yesterday the latest chapter of Telltale's Guardians of the Galaxy dropped and uh, went and uh, tore through that. Uh, our friend Carl got to tune in, Carl, hey! and uh, and hang out. So yeah, did was- you um? Are you liking it more now? Because I know you you didn't like the art style was a little bit different and you weren't kind of sure. Are you liking it? Is it is it yeah. up there or is it just kind of blah? Yeah, this is definitely one where uh, you know how Telltale likes to take their time, and this time the emotional aspect of the story kind of got its grips and got its hooks in. Uh, and so as far the, the art style is still is the same as the first episode, but I guess I'm used to it now. Good. It's just kind of oh, this is how it is. Okay, here we go. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was funny. Carl actually mentioned, cause he's in Australia, so it's a huge time difference. And, and he said, wow, I, I didn't expect to be crying this early in the morning. So yeah. it was, <laughs> wow. it, was a, it was a fun time, but, uh, that's, that is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, uh, Sarah's brother, David and his wife are coming into town today and, uh, I guess they're staying with us. So, uh, <laughs> that's, I, I, I recently At least found had the room for it. <laughs> I recently found that out. <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah, you were informed. You were informed which, this morning. I'll just stay at Ed's. <laughs> which, which could be a little awkward because uh, Sarah leaves for uh, another little mini Zumba tour on Friday. I leave for E3 on Sunday, and they're supposed to be in town until Monday. Aye. So. Aye, aye, aye. Looks like May's taking over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's like, I got this. Right. So we'll... <laughs> We'll see what happens. They may stay at Sarah's sister for for the majority of the time, uh, but uh, yeah, that that'll be a good time, I'm sure. There you go. Yeah, I like that. It's, it's great, man. Kristoff. Oh man, it was actually a really light weekend here. It rained pretty much the entire weekend. Yeah. Mm. Um. So wasn't real any reason to do anything. There was a a little point inside there where um. It kind of stopped for a while, so I got made sure that I got the dog walked a couple of times in between all the downpours. 
Um, but on Saturday was just spent taking it easy. Stacy had to fly out on Sunday morning. So like we did all of our laundry so that she could pack all of her clothes. I usually help her pack up, um, like her shirts and stuff and Mm -hmm. kind of help her get it all set together. Um, and then we just took it easy, uh, the rest of the day, went to bed a little bit early cause I had to be up at five to take her to work the next day, which actually I wasn't up. I didn't go to bed early. I actually stayed up playing Overwatch <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> uh, with Ed and a bunch of other people I, and Chancel and Gil. Um, Bad influence. But then got up at five and took Stacey to the airport. So that was kind of a bummer, but she's only going to be there a week. And this one is uh, her parents are actually going to be going up there and meeting her because they're going to actually get to attend one of our grand opening parties. Nice. And plus um, her mom's got family up there that they haven't seen in a really long time. So they're going to get to spend time with them. And it's going to be a positive experience for her. So I'm excited about that. However, it, her and I are not going to overlap before I head out for E3. Mm. So she flies back on Monday and I fly out on Monday. Ah. Or actually she wow. might actually be, I don't remember if she flies back Monday or Tuesday. I think it's Monday, but regardless, we're not going to see each other. So it's going to be another two week stint before we see each other. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of in a way it's normal, even though she's only going to be gone uh, a week. Mm-hmm. Um, Outside of that, all I've done is just played games. Uh, I did take my car. If y'all remember, I mentioned a couple weeks back that I had dropped or I'd gotten hit. I gotten rear ended, yeah. mm-hmm. but just kind of like scraped up the bumper. It wasn't a huge deal or anything. I just took it into the shop yesterday. They said it's only going to take two or three days to turn it around. So hopefully by this weekend, it's all ready to be picked up and there's no, nice. they don't find any extra damage. I really don't think they're going to, but mm-hmm. hopefully they don't so that it comes out for the amount of money I'm expecting. Um, and I'm hoping that it happens this week because I don't want Stacy to get back and have to deal with it. I want to be able yeah, to exactly. just have it all taken care of and have the car back. Yeah. Um, so that'll all be taken care of. Um, and that's kind of been it. I mean, since it's bachelor town again, it's just go to work, come home, walk the dog, play some games, go to work, come home, <laughs> yeah. walk the dog, play some games, <laughs> um, Eat, sleep, overwatch. Yeah. I have been, <laughs> right. wa- I did watch, overwatch. uh, I did watch on Sunday, the NBA finals. I watched some of the predators game the other night, which I won't talk about. I'll let Tim do all his talking on the, the predators <laughs> game, but whenever it's the Stanley cup or the NBA finals, if I haven't been paying attention before, I tend to usually pay attention then because that's, you know, when it's all on the line and that adds to the drama and just makes sports even better than because when it's all on the line, mm-hmm. sports are awesome, even more so than usual. Right. Yeah. Um, so I have been watching a little bit of that. As far as gaming goes, I've gotten back in like full swing with Hearthstone. I'm definitely playing oh, nice. a lot more, um, mostly on my phone when I'm remote and going out and about. Um, I don't play on the desktop very often. Uh, that's pretty much the only mobile video game that I play. I just don't ever really gravitate to any other games that I try. I might play them for a week or so, and then I just get bored and move away. Hearthstone's the only one that's kind of stayed there for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, whenever I have free time on mobile, that's when I'm playing. Um, I've been playing Overwatch a ton of it, trying to get any kind of awesome loot that I can, and I'm getting absolutely nothing. (laughs) I feel your pain, Gabe, because this is horrible. (laughs) This is horrible. Come on in, the water's fine. Oh my gosh, it is the worst thing ever. Isn't it? The other day, I mean, I've gotten, I've grown, let's see, it was, I was just hit 100, pretty much, when the event started. I'm at Hmm. 26, so I've gone 26 levels. And almost every loot box has been three duplicates and like an emblem. Yeah. Wow. It is ridiculous. I have gotten a few legendary things, but what they are is either coins or I've gotten a skin that's a legendary skin maybe that I didn't have, which is cool, but it's one that's been part of the game since the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. I could buy that with the coins I have. It's like, give me some cool stuff, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have gotten a few emotes, so I've gotten three, I think. So, you know, it's not like I've gotten absolutely nothing. Yeah, but it's just crazy. So a little bit of a spoiler for new stories coming up. I'm super looking forward to the fact that Overwatch is going to have a double XP weekend Mm -hmm. this coming weekend. Yes, because outside of doing laundry and packing for the flight on Monday, (laughs) I got nothing. So I'm going to be playing (laughs) my tail off. So community come at me because I also want that 20 percent group bonus. Mm -hmm. Let's make this happen. Let's make this happen. Um, and something that I forgot to mention last week, um, I actually picked up NBA Playgrounds. Oh, did you? Oh, wow. Yeah, because oh, nice. I saw that they had dropped the patch that brought in like a shot meter, yep. which that was kind of my biggest issue. It also made it to where you could party up and play against a, a friend if that's your thing, if it's something you want to do, which I do want to play it against my brother at some point. I just haven't been able to sync up schedules and stuff. Um, but the shot meter definitely helped over the way that it played during the beta. 
Hmm. Um, I haven't spent a ton of time with it, uh, but I have played, I played all the way through the New York tournament and beat that one. And I think I'm on to the Tokyo tournament or, or Japan, whichever. I'm not exactly sure where it is, but the second tournament, whichever one it is. There's nice. a little bit more rubber banding happening on that one than there oh, was in the yeah, first that. one. Yeah, <laughs> really. But I'm actually kind of getting the hang of how the controls work. The stamina, man, that thing ain't no joke. It goes down quick. So you've really mm. got to figure out what you're going to do and kind of have a game plan. Um, but having the shot meter and, and, and everything really makes it a different game than what it was in the beta. Much more, it, definitely worth the 20 bucks in my opinion. There's, it's still got some frustrating nice. aspects, but... I'm glad that I grabbed it finally. Um, as far as cards wise, I've gotten, I have, I get about a duplicate every single pack that I open, but I don't, I haven't gotten a ton of them. I've got a lot of Milwaukee buck or is Milwaukee. Is that the bucks? Mm -hmm. I've got a lot of those players yes. for some weird reason. So out of everybody's like, that's the team that I have the most players from. Mm. Um, but it's been cool. And I, I enjoy the pack opening system. It's kind of just like a loot box. I, I like the enjoyment of seeing what's going to be there. And then when you do get something cool, like a legendary character, which I've gotten a couple. That's been really cool. Um, and that's pretty much been it. I mean, nothing else really, just kind of hunkering down, trying to get the days to be done as soon as possible so that Monday we'll get here and I can fly out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nice. I know, well, right? Countdown begins, baby. Yep, that's yeah, it. it. Does. Nice. Tim Router. Yeah, buddy. Tell me something good. <laughs> Tell All right. me something we got good. Piper's Topic of the Week. It actually could be a good episode title. Chocolate Frosties and Grandpa. Oh, That's what we're dealing mm, with. Nice. So uh, the, the Chocolate Frosties is because my Predators are crushing it right now. Dude. They evened up the series. And because they scored uh, four goals or more per game, everybody gets a Chocolate Frosty. If you, oh, nice. if you uh, follow them on Twitter, you get a coupon and you get a Chocolate Frosty. So we've had two Chocolate Frosties because they won back-to-back -back games of scoring four or more. So I cannot believe them, that. Man. Like I'm I, so when, when we this... were down two zero, I was like, "Well, the Stanley yeah. Cup was fun." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was. It was a good run. But no, I we are officially, I think, ten and one now at home in the playoffs. And of course, the the one loss is the one that Piper and I, the game that Piper and I actually went to. But <laughs> yeah, y'all stay out. The whatever. Games. Yeah, yeah, we're not yeah. we're not going to games anymore. Um, <laughs> but man, everybody is singing the praises of Nashville. It is a it is an overnight hockey town. People loved it here. The atmosphere was ama amazing. Over fifty thousand people were just hmm. watching it outside of the arena. Alan Jackson threw a free concert right in, right on Broadway on uh, for Saturday's game. And it's just, it was just incredible. And and I sang the national anthem on Monday. Yeah, it was really, really yeah. cool. Um, it was a great experience. The notes and, were all over the place, but besides that, I was proud. Yeah, he, seriously, yeah. no, he was all, he would definitely, I was like, oh, no, oh. I, know, I was oh, like, no, wait, no, where no. is he? Where, over here. Where is he going? Yeah, yeah. Dirks. Hey, the key, the key is here, brother. The key, oh. over here. Ding, 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 yeah, ding, ding, yep. ding. This Whoa. is what we want. Ding, ding, ding. Hold, holding his left ear or whatever. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, so uh, Piper and I, and the, now the whole family's watching the Preds games, too. Got Lauren into it, and nice. we all have t-shirts, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun, so we're having a good time. So we got our next game on Thursday in Pittsburgh, and then any which way you slice it, the Stanley Cup, whether the Pens win or the Preds win, the Stanley Cup will be here in Nashville on Sunday for Game 6. Wow. So it's it's very exciting. This town is, is definitely... Um, it's been great, and I've seen so many articles of everybody just being really nice and really cool, and hmm. the fans are great, and the atmosphere is amazing, and it's it's so much fun. And Piper's loving it, and I'm loving it, and the beard keeps growing, baby. I'm keeping it for E3, too, so it'll, yes! be, there we go. it'll be nice. Beard bros! <laughs> for you. Yes, man, that's for you, Chris, so we're gonna, I'm going <laughs> to keep it, and then after E3, then I'll probably shave it off, but we'll see. I'm, I'm actually digging it. I've, I've definitely... This is way beyond... Um, the no shave November. I've, I'm definitely pushed through the itchy phase, and now I just play with it all the time. But yes, it's, yeah, it's it's nice. I'm digging it. Nice. Um, and then uh, and then for my father, uh, thank you to everybody for all the well wishes, prayers, and thoughts. It's very very cool. Mm. Um, our community is amazing. Um, just an update on him. He was admitted in the hospital uh, this past Wednesday, and he got out on Monday. Uh, his first round is done, and man, everything is going great. Praise the awesome. Lord! It is yes. just been awesome. That's awesome. The to doctors hear. like this. We are on the right track. He said thousands of cancer cells are dying every week because of the chemo, and you're doing great. And um, he's feeling good. He's. Um, I don't think the the effects of the chemo will really start taking effect in, 
effect until his second uh, after his second treatment. That's what my mom said too. She said it doesn't really hit you all, you know, mm -hmm. right immediately. But um, a lot of the stuff that he's taking, it, you know, he just has to be careful of a lot of things. Like he's in a, like an isolated room. And, you know, mm. if you, you can't be sick or you can't do anything like he just because his immune system is definitely going to be affected yeah, by, a by the right chemo. Now. Right. Yeah, it takes a beating. So he has to kind of it's kind of like when you when you have a newborn and you kind of can't go anywhere for a little while and mm -hmm. you just have to kind of stay in. So uh, he's home now. I, I didn't get a chance to visit him in the hospital because of this lingering cough. And Piper was complaining of, of a sore throat over the weekend, too, even oh, though that didn't, le that didn't lead to anything, which is awesome. Uh, for once Good. and um so we so we were able to facetime and honestly that was probably easier to do because uh my, my i was talking to my brother yesterday and he said that they went and like they have to you know scrub and they have to just there's a lot mm. of of prep before you can actually go you can't even really touch him you can just kind of face Be in the uh, room fist, with him yeah. fist bump him like howie mandel style and then um and that's it so it's like what's the fun in that if i can't like you know hold my dad or whatever so but it's it's all good. So the FaceTime's been great. He's just in great spirits. He's just watching a lot of movies and stuff, and he's doing really well. So I'm good. I'm thrilled, and, and thanks yeah, to everybody for all news. the support. So he's uh, he's home for the next uh, 14 days, and then he goes back in on June 21st for his next treatment, and uh, it's their it's their 50th wedding anniversary this week, mm. and so they're just gonna probably hang out at home and, and chill out. And yeah, man. So it's 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 good though. So good. everything's going well there. Um, this past weekend, it, I feel like we're on like the kids' birthday circuit, and I think we will be for like the for <laughs> rest of all your life. year round now. Yeah, for the rest of our <laughs> life. It's right. Like, there's always some kids' birthday we got to go to. So right. we had one on Saturday, and then uh, and then we ended up getting back and watching the Preds game. And, and, uh, it's, it's it was kind of a, a chill weekend, which is good. And, uh, I like you, Chris, just kind of counting down the days to E3. I'm just getting everything together. I've got my pass ready and, um, just trying to figure out, uh, like what we're doing. And, uh, it's, I'm just, just the whole potential of all of us just being together and hanging out. And, and all we're doing is we're focusing on upcoming games and just getting excited. Like the, I'm, I'm already on the hype train, man. Mm. I'm ready to go. This is going to be great. Two, two. So <laughs> come on, ride it. Hype train. <laughs> <laughs> whoop, whoop. So anyway, um, Jeez. on the game, <laughs> I got to take it. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the gaming front, man, I, um, I haven't really streamed a whole lot just because my cough is still around and I I just feel like I keep hacking. But also, mm. dude, Witcher 3 Blood and Wine DLC has a ton of side missions to do. And that's, <laughs> I'm kind of... That's awesome. I'm kind Wasn't of that doing, just The Witcher? <laughs> well, yeah, pretty much. But um, I, I wanted to stream kind of the main mission because the main mission is actually getting really good now. Mm. And so... Uh, Chris, I know you did that for Horizon Zero Dawn. You focused more on the main mission. And, yeah, I did most did of the kind of side stuff off, off stream. of stream. Yeah, but there wasn't yeah. to, to the same level, as, at least oh, as I understand is, it. Yeah, this is ridiculous. It's it's this game has taken over my life again. I get up mm. super excited, and I'm like, all right, I got to get these missions done, and and then uh, so hopefully. Uh, I'll be able to stream a little bit more of the main mission. I've got a ton of work to do before we leave for LA, <laughs> though. So I'm gonna be up. Uh, early slash late slash however but if i get sleep great if i don't whatever but i got to get some stuff done before so but man i'm just that i said it last week i've fallen in love with that game again it is just so good good and it's so much fun to do and uh and there's so many things to do and I, I, it's weird, like it's overwhelming, but it's not like because you're enjoying it. And I'm just like, all right, what's the next yeah. thing we got? And one mission leads, one side mission leads to another one. I found this note and okay, I got to go over here and battle this beast. And it's just so much fun. So I'm having such a good time with it. So uh, yeah, man, I think that's pretty much it for me. Nice. That's awesome. Cool. All right, Mr. Awesome. Patillo, the question we all want to know. Mm. Did Remy like the sand? Oh, <laughs> yes. I, I figured, I figured not. That old Remy boy. We're dying to know. He ended up uh, loving the beach. Nice. Really? <laughs> he's, he was slow to it, but uh -huh. he's a slow to it kind of guy mm -hmm. about most things. So he actually loved the beach. Remy loved the beach. Yes, he loved it. And it was, it was you know, we first got out, we got him like these little sand shoes at first. Mm -hmm. We were like, oh, yeah. well, he's going to hate the sand. So, we'll, you know, yeah. and we kind of like <laughs> set him down and he kind of just stood there. It was like, eh. 
No, I don't know. <laughs> Why am I saying? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And so, um, <laughs> you know, we laid the blanket out and did the whole thing. And, you know, I got down there and we started doing sandcastles and stuff like that. And uh, he's, you know, he kind of like would pick it up and look at it, go through his hands. He was like, I don't. I don't know, guys. I don't know how I mm-hmm. feel about if this. This is yeah. I'm having feelings, but I don't know what to do with them. I feel weird. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I'm safe, right? This stuff is weird. It's like the first right. time I tu- I say first time. It's like the when I touched mercury for the first time in seventh grade. There was like a I thought I was tripping. Like mercury that's <laughs> in like a thermostat or a thermometer. Right. right. I didn't know you were not supposed to touch it. I was uh, like, you touched it? I know. I didn't know what it <laughs> I was. was. Like, I've thought, never touched Mercury. I, I thought I was in the Matrix. I was like, oh, what is that? Because you like hit it and it just like and like goes apart and then back together. I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, man. It, it was like that for him. It was like, Can you I know, eat this? We, <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> Will I get superpowers if I put this in my mouth? <laughs> right. Um, and so, uh, you know, because we never, we don't really like do me and Jenny aren't big on like, let's buy sand and do it in the house. You know what I mean? So I don't know <laughs> right. if he's even, you know, you don't have a sandbox in the back. <laughs> exactly. So we don't even, no, even me neither, man, I'm with ever you. Ever touched sand before. So, mm-hmm. um, so, but anyway, all that to say slowly, but surely he ended up falling in love with it, fell in love with the ocean. So mm. we were out there. Oh, that's great. Playing man. And stuff like that. And so yesterday he's, he came, he came up to me. He's like, daddy, I go, I go beach, <laughs> go beach. That's oh. awesome. I was like, oh, but we can't, we, I'm not driving all the way down there for your enjoyment. Yeah, not, not, yeah, um, right. But it was, they did amazing in the car. We were so yes. happy about everything went great. Vacation was good. Good, it's, man. It's That's still what you tough, but it was, it was good. Like family but manageable. time, manageable. Hmm. I remember uh, Louis C.K., <laughs> has an old bit about vacations with family. And uh, he said, um, and it's so true. He says, I'm going to butcher it, but the gist is he talks about getting his whole family in the car, all packed up, ready to go, closes the door and gets his wife in the car and the walk from his wife, his wife's side of the car over (laughs) to his side. That's his vacation. (laughs) <laughs> that's awesome yeah. right. that's great uh and so and perfect there was definitely times where it felt like that where you're like this i'm not mm. calling this vacation i'm gonna start saying we took a trip and the kids went on vacation and me and right. jenny went and on a trip with yeah. us yeah exactly and so um but it was still great man ate good food uh strangely enough i don't know her but there's a, a christian singer named lauren daigle and uh, she's got this mm-hmm. really beautiful, smoky voice for her young age and uh, had some big songs a couple years ago or whatever. Anyway, we went and ate dinner and she was there. And uh, I'll get out. it was kind of one huh. of those things where I was like, do I say something? Because hmm. I don't know her. Uh, but we, you know, kind of work in the same world. And it was funny because we were walking up. Yeah. There was another guy sitting there that looked really familiar, but I didn't, you know, same thing. I was like, ah, yeah, I'm not going to be like, hey, are, are, do we do the same thing kind of. And so I was like, oh, man, what mm-hmm. a small world that we're, you know, both down here in right. Seaside. It was Alice Beach. We went and ate at a place called uh, George's, and it was delicious. Oh, man. That place is the bomb. Oh. The bomb. So good, My right? My gosh. Mm. We got this dessert that make you want to punch someone. Nice. <laughs> hey, can you come here for a second? <laughs> <laughs> Sucker punched to the face. Um... Yeah, so all that was good. Uh, I took the, I, I think I tweeted it, but took the Switch and played some Mario Kart while I was down there. Nice. Oh, that nice. was a good time. I've only gone online like twice because I'm still like, you know, a little shaky about it. Especially the, the, the <laughs> D- DLC courses, I don't know half as well. I mean, I don't even know those a quarter mm-hmm. as well as what, you know, came originally or natively with Mario right. Kart 8. Uh, and then, when did you guys you know, get back from the beach? We got back s- Sunday. Oh, nice, man. Oh, nice. Yeah, so made it back in time for the, I forget which game we were watching that night, which, whether it was the Preds or the Warriors, but, uh, uh, you know, Warriors. neck deep in, in finals regardless. 
And I'm so yeah, glad baby. that <laughs> I'm so glad that we're in the Stanley Cup versus somebody that's not the Kings. Because last time right. I was at E3, mm. the, the yeah, Los, that's right. Los Angeles Kings were in the Stanley that was 2012. Cup. And it was nuts downtown. Yeah. Oh, oh it's going to be nuts. It's going to be nuts downtown this weekend, too, because CMA Festival's happening and Bonnaroo. Oh, so if you're coming right. to Nashville, if you're coming to Nashville, just go somewhere else because yeah. I don't know where you're going <laughs> to yeah. find a place to stay. If you're coming to Nashville, it's just It's going to be insane. Yeah. We love you. We love you, but you're going to have to leave. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be <laughs> insane this weekend. Can I interest you in Memphis? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> have you seen Knoxville? <laughs> We'll even the we'll pl- even show the you the have room up in Indiana. <laughs> there you exactly. Go. <laughs> Ever been in Notre Dame? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's all that's going on. Still no console gaming for me as far as uh, oh man, not a handheld. Um, mm. I know the Switch is a console before everybody gets upset. <laughs> he said he played Mario Kart. <laughs> um, so I, I haven't played any Overwatch or anything like that. I've been wanting to, but it's just time has not allotted itself. And mm-hmm. I'm really excited because, yes, E3 is next week, and we're going to all be together, and we're super excited. But I leave tomorrow um, from the day of recording. Ooh-wee. I leave for L.A. tomorrow and do mm. two shows in L.A., then do a show in uh, Concord, and then fly back to L.A. for E3. So my trip kind of starts tomorrow, so I'm like nice. extremely jazzed about all that. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Now Gabe's vacation begins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? That's right. You exactly. did the family thing and now it's now it's you time. <laughs> right. It's Gabe time. Exactly. Um, so yeah, man. That's all that's going on. Sorry, I'm boring and dragging on. No, man, it's good. You're fine, dude. I want I, I want I want to believe something else happened, but it just it it didn't. <laughs> How did you know it was Lauren Daigle? You recognized her? You just had never Jenny met her? recognized her. Okay. She, we ah. kind of walked through her party she was like kind of meeting up with some other people like a group of 10 of them and mm. uh and she recognized her i i didn't know i don't know what she looks like even now still yeah um but you know i just knew that she was the young one out of the group you know right so anyway nice man nice good deal all right router uh, si senor <laughs> you got it uh, uh si senor <laughs> <laughs> well let's do it! Uh, new releases this week. We've got some Elder Scrolls Online Morrowind, little additional DLC for you mm. uh, for the Xbox One, PC, and PS4. And as Eduardo had mentioned, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy Episode 2, Under Pressure, Telltale, released for the PS4, Pressure. Xbox One, and PC. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure that's on there. Is yeah, that song that, in was there? Was that song in there? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I don't know, because they have an <laughs> option now where you can turn off the copyrighted music. That is that's crazy. right. Yeah, that's and, a that's Which is a kind of cool and kind of saves their butts at the same time, which is, you know, which is smart. I, I yeah. will say that's But do you want the original thing? That's the only thing I was wondering. I know, what, man. Yeah, but at the same time, like, it's was cool the because copyright music like terrible, or was it still no? Great it was throwback. awesome. Like oh. it sounded, it reminded me of Tales from the Borderland type style music. Um, so yeah, I thought it would just mute the music, but I was like, oh no, they just replaced it with so- different songs. <laughs> it was really cool. <laughs> I know, <right? laughs> like the whole time you're going. Why did you guys both go there on that song? That's so funny. Because because we're white. <laughs> and that's how that goes. And because it, you can use it, it's it's a and it's a universal hilarious. Yeah, it's right. a universal hilarious. <laughs> I think it is. Track. Yeah, yeah. So was it not '80s hits, or was it still '80s hits, or was it? No, it it wasn't uh, '80s hits. It was just uh, like um, orchestral music. Oh, okay. So it wasn't popular music. Like- yeah, th- like th- they would kind of like there was a moment where he put his headphones on to get ready to fight, and instead of whatever song he was listening to. You just heard an alternate, okay, here we go, let's do this kind of style music, you know, so right. it was, uh, yeah. it was really well done. I was Something impressed. Something that sounds somewhat like in the same vein, but 
Yeah, just captures that same free. mood, I'm sure. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't like Velvet Rain. Velvet Rain. <laughs> it wasn't just a bunch of songs no. that were just slightly off. Purple Train. <laughs> purple Train. <laughs> no, it was, it was Chocolate Rain. Oh, chocolate. So, yeah. oh. chocolate Ray. Nice. nice. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Oh, that's... A little birth of YouTube. Oh, that's good. Ray, it is. <laughs> Throwback. That's so funny. Oh, that's really interesting, though. That's, yeah, it was that's cool. That's cool that you can do that. So either Telltale wants to pay royalties or they don't want to pay royalties. It's your call. They don't want your video to get flagged. Yeah, that's what it is. They're doing the exact yeah. opposite of Persona. They're like, you know what? We want you <laughs> right. to put our videos on YouTube so much. That will make an option so you can do it okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. I was so That's happy. really cool. It's kind of funny they labeled it stream safe. Uh, as the option is stream safe because mm-hmm. it really is right. only for the, the after the fact where it needs to be safe. Like yeah. either on yeah, YouTube exactly. or the archived one. Because when you stream it, even if it does have copyright music, like it'll stream through just fine. Mm-hmm. It's kind of just a funny way that they worded it, but I'm sure they don't want to write the actual words like YouTube afterwards, or maybe right. I want to call it like archive <laughs> YouTube safe safe. or something. Yeah. yeah. Interesting the way they did that. Well, there it is. Guardians of the Galaxy episode two under pressure. Uh, that's <laughs> out. And then uh, Dirt 4 for the PS4 and Xbox One is out as well. So a little light, and it usually is a little light right before E3 anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We did have one oops at voice by Nathan. Xbox Game Pass doesn't require Xbox box live gold to use the game's online component it is um it is but not offline content that was that was kind yeah, of i read i looked back you, at the article that i was reading and they they had it wrong in there because then when if you go to uh xbox game pass like on microsoft's website if you look at their faq it says explicitly in there you only need xbox live if the game you're trying to play has some type of multiplayer component so oh yeah, interesting so you I can have, have game pass without live huh yeah Mm. There it is, boys. I like anyway, that. that's it for me. Back to you. Chris McCracken. Okay, well, we're going to start with uh, Nintendo has finally dropped a bunch of information about their upcoming um, online subscription service that you'll need for various things. So we're going to start with the price. It is either $3.99 per month or $20.1999 for a year. It wow. is required for online gameplay. Yep. You are going to get a selection of classic games that will be available with your subscription service. More on that in a second. Um, there will be exclusive discounts tied to it. It will have... <laughs> no, there's not. Well, that's what they said <laughs> now. Exactly. Yeah. Friggin' Nintendo, man. You I'm get five cents off exactly. your purchase. They have that whole thing like, mark down 1%. Here's a nickel. Exclusive discounts. Yeah. yeah. What's exclusive is that it's barely happening. Yeah. Um, you are going to have voice chat, but it's going to be going through um, the smartphone app that they're going to be bringing out. Um, cloud saves, it says to be determined. <laughs> There's no real definitive information on that at the moment. There's not going to be any type of streaming gameplay service or whatever tied in with it at all at the moment. Um, the smartphone app, like I said, it will be coming later, and that will have. Uh, that's how you'll be able to log- group up into parties and do party chat um, through there. Did I mention Lane? And then uh, Kotaku wor- reached out uh, <laughs> for uh, a little bit of confirmation, because if you remember when they originally talked about how the service was coming, they were saying, oh, you're going to get access to a classic game, and you're going to have that game for a month, and then when that month's over, that game will go away, and you'll get a new classic right. game. Well, they have actually switched that up. It says Nintendo Switch Online subscribers are going to have an access, an ongoing access to a library of classic games that will be added to the online play. So really? it's definitely different. So you're going to have a pool of games. It'll probably, let's say it'll be like 100 maybe to start, and I'm assuming that they'll add to it as it goes. They don't say that explicitly, but I would assume that's the way that it was going to go. Oh, you, um, you think so, it'll start out as a group of games instead of there being like two, then six, then eight, then it, 12? It might. It might be, you know, just a a handful at the very beginning, but it's definitely different than the way that was, where it's like, you're going to have Super Mario Brothers 3 for this Mm. month, and then next week, now you've got Dr. Mario. It's going to be whatever they offer is going to be available right then, and you can go between all the ones that are available. And they did say they're just going to be NES and SNES games, or have they not said? Uh, I think that's what I saw, is that it is uh, NES and S, Super NES, uh, at least off the bat. I don't... I don't haven't seen any confirmation that they're going to be anything different like GameCube or 64 right. later on. Mm-hmm. You, would, mm. I mean, I would assume they'll work that part all out later on. But then again, I don't really know even what's available now, like on Virtual Console on the Wii U. I don't know what it goes through because um, I didn't have a Wii U. So maybe it'll only be this. But even if it's only the NES games and the SNES games, I feel like that's 
especially for twenty dollars a year. I, that seems that's, like that's just a such a good great service. deal. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, oh, sorry, it only works in the evening. Yeah. And you're gonna be like, why? <laughs> After midnight, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you wanted the good games <laughs> uh, when the moon is full, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I think that this is definitely. Uh, it's definitely a good move, obviously, for Nintendo to be able to do this. And the fact that they're just kind of tiptoeing into it means that it, they could have come out because, you know, Nintendo and dropped it at like the same price as PlayStation Plus and Xbox Live. Mm-hmm. And and people would have paid it, but it would have been a little bit ridiculous considering, you know, that it's missing a few features and that the fact that like the whole party system is tied through a smartphone, which there's debate about whether or not that's a good idea, bad idea. It's a terrible idea. Well, I agree with that, but there's people out there who don't think that's a big deal. <laughs> really? And, you know, oh yeah, there's people out there who think, oh, it's going to work just fine and it'll be fine through your phone. And I mean, I'm not going to say they're wrong. I'm sure it will work for the best that it can be, but I don't find it ideal. I find it a bit silly, but regardless, the fact that they've decided to discount their service when compared to their competitors, because they're, what they're offering isn't quite as robust yet at the same time, it's definitely a valuable aspect. Like if I owned a Nintendo switch, I would purchase it like twenty dollars. That's just like an afterthought. I would purchase it just right, because, you right? Know? Of course. So it totally makes sense, and it's definitely a, a another good step that Nintendo's making in the right direction. And I'm glad they finally dropped some information about it. And it is going to be free when it launches for everybody until 2018. You don't have to start paying for it. Well, until it's free now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Is it, it's not becoming a paid service until next year. And then, but we're probably not getting the games till next year either, right? Uh, like I, I wonder if they'll start. I know dropping I don't the free think games. that they're out right now, but I, I don't. I didn't see when that's gonna start. It's interesting mm. because, like, I don't know why I'm so pessimistic, but like something about it being twenty dollars makes me hesitant about thinking that it'll be good. Is it too well, cheap? Yeah, it's like it's like I I don't like if somebody said, "Hey, LASIK over here is fifteen hundred dollars." LASIK over here is a hundred dollars. Like I wouldn't go to the hundred dollar place. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, I, I hear the whole wait and see kind of thing because Nintendo's never really done this. So you have to go into it with a little bit of, okay, how's this going to get screwed up? But right. at the same time, I mean, they're saying all the right things. So, and if they let no it run room. all year, you know, yeah, and, and fix the bugs as, as we, Mm-hmm. are able to you know yeah. game together right now you know yeah, what I the mean? fact that it's going to be free for the first so many months or whatever i mean that's a good thing because then if there are in bugs like you said was like well you're getting it's what free. you paid for i right. mean come on exactly. yeah we're, we're exactly. working this out so that it can be on point when you start actually paying for it right and, even and when i don't want to fall it, back yeah. on that though because like you know what i'm saying like if it's terrible but hey it's only 20 dollars a year yeah but mm. see the the thing kind of the way that i approach it is Nintendo makes some weird, goofy, and sometimes, in my opinion, dumb decisions. Mm -hmm. But when they do decide to do something, they usually go at it full force and do it well. So of what they're doing, I think they'll do well with what they're saying they're going to do. Yeah. So I have every bit of faith that it'll it'll work out. Now, do I want them to adapt it and make it even better? Absolutely. I mean, it's still like the Nintendo way of doing things. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. their way of doing things tends to work out really well. So for how they're trying to, yeah, do and it. It, it may not be right out the gate. <clears throat> excuse me, it may not be right out the gate, uh, really great. But they'll probably expand on that, and and hopefully the you know the service gets better and better. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. And uh, speaking of that, and one of the reasons I think this smartphone idea is terrible. Um, they released the, I think it's Hori, the, the company that released the dongle for how to party chat and listen to game audio for Splatoon. Yes. Mm. Uh, <laughs> this thing, man. So it, Splatoon, you know, it's all like based around squids and all this business. So it's like mm-hmm. the Splatoon shaped squid kind of thing, kind of looks like an arrow pointing to the left. Mm-hmm. And, um, so what you would what you would do is you'd plug your switch into that the audio jack plug another audio jack into that so that's two wires going into this dongle and then out of the dongle is um your headphones and so you have to kind of sit there 
with your cell phone sitting there plugged into this thing that's plugged into your headphones with this thing also plugged into the switch so that you can have audio from your chat and audio from the game. And that's why I don't like the idea of a smartphone app. Number one, I don't want another piece of hardware that I have to use. And number mm-hmm. two, the fact that without this, you only get chat audio through your headphones and yep. not, no game audio. Is Wait, like, even with this device, you don't get the game audio into with, the headset? With, with this device, you do. Okay. But okay. that's what I'm saying. When but you have to plug two wires. Yes, in. yes. Yes. And, but without it, that's what I'm saying. That's why I don't like the idea of the, the audio being on the cell phone or whatever yes. other thing is because the game audio is lost. And mm-hmm. so you're like, why, 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 mm. would, why would they make it like this? And why can't they not have it like this? And what happens if you get a call in the middle of your game? I mean, what happens of a million things? You know what right. I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I did see, so this information, the, the device that you're talking about dropped and then afterwards, I think maybe the next day or maybe it was later that same day is when all the online stuff dropped. So they definitely were like, here's this stupid stuff, but hey, check it out online. So they were able to end on a, on a happy note. <laughs> on a high note. Now, I, exactly. I'm with you. I think the whole having to play it, uh, you do your game chat audio through a phone app or an iPad app if it's on a tablet or wherever it is, <laughs> is stupid because I want to have game audio and chat audio in the same spot. So yeah. I, I, I'm with you. And I see all if kinds I play, of... What if I play it with it docked? Yeah, I know. There's right, that whole right? mess. Because then now you've got to have wire long enough to go back to your couch or wherever. Or you've got to be up close enough to your screen. And then how does it plug in? I'm assuming there are plugs on the dock that'll work with that. But mm-hmm. well, I don't I, know what they are. No, I don't but what I'm one. wondering is the, the headphone jack is at the top of the switch. Okay. So I don't even know if you can pull audio from it with it docked. Oh, wow. it's HDMI to your television. Hmm. If, oh, yeah, if they have this, uh, this way of doing things, I have to believe that the switch can then send out audio through the headphone jack and the HDMI at the same time. I don't mm-hmm. know that, but it has to be able to do that. If this is the way they're setting it up. I'm sure Verizon was happy. Cause they were like, yay, everyone's getting unlimited data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Except they're like, Oh yeah. The new iPhone doesn't have a headphone port. <laughs> um, and yeah, so, it's very so true. like the, the whole thing, I was like, how do you like, I'm just, I'm just trying to picture myself with my switch. If I'm gaming long enough that I'm doing something like this, then I want my switch plugged in. So that's a power cord going in the bottom of the switch, a headphone jack coming out of the top into a dongle, that dongle split into my phone, which I also want being charged because I'm talking through it and using up the battery. So that's plugged into the wall and then a wire going into the dongle, into the headphones. It just seems like an octopus, like crazy peripheral. Or maybe totally. a squid. <laughs> but like, I just, I just don't get like, just thinking of all the wires makes me crazy. It's the future. Yeah. I Especially mean, when we live in a tech, technological age where yeah. everybody's trying to get away from wires and go wireless. It's like why you're just bringing us back to 2000 and late. So come on. And you know, I said, I oh. said a little bit, of, I was saying a little bit ago that there were some people who didn't think this was a big deal. I've also seen surprisingly a lot of people saying that voice chat doesn't even matter. I don't even want it. I don't care about all this kind of stuff. It's like, look, okay. I understand that. But I mean, come look, it's 2017. (laughs) Come on, baby. Yeah. Your console needs to have a standard 2009 technology built into it. (laughs) I understand. understand, I understand. You may not need to use it. You may not want to use it. It (laughs) it might not matter. Like, and I'm going to kind of get to this with another story here in a minute, but it's like, look, there are certain things that, Yes, maybe they don't matter. because And there was I, some of the reasons that I saw was like, I don't want my kid playing a Nintendo game and having to worry about people like maybe calling them names or something. And considering that Nintendo that. is more of like a kid's platform in terms of it's very kid-friendly and has a lot of kid-friendly stuff more so than other consoles. And that's why they've said that I they've kept that. away this kind of thing before. Yes, mm-hmm. and, and I, I understand, you know, that standpoint. But come on now, most people that play games are... Are adults or young adults? I mean, yeah, it, they're they're okay. And then there's parental controls inside there. It's things that you can turn off if you your kid's gonna play and you don't want them to hear voice chat. You can turn stuff off, as I understand it. Again, not having a switch, I'm a little bit ignorant, but that's what I've read is that there are parental controls in there. So you need to have like a party system. And I want to be like, man, come on now. But at the same time, it's like they're giving you something. It's baby steps. It's Nintendo. This is the way they do things. Baby steps into the to the, you know, the current times. So 
I'm I'm at least applauding that they're doing something. I just don't know why the Switch can't have voice chat. That just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. It's not probably that it can't. I'm sure that there's a myriad of other decisions that are into it. Like, is it going to make the battery drain even more? Is all these other different things. There's so many different things they're considering when they're building this. And mm-hmm. while some of the decisions they make, you know, we might find dumb compared to the trade-off, there are reasons why they didn't do it. And Nintendo knows what those reasons are. Who, you know... But I, I don't think that there's somebody, you know, Mr. Nintendo's over there like, oh, this is dumb. We're not going to do it. There's got to be some reason. So you, you guys with the iPhones, you can charge the iPhone and have headphones plugged in, right? Uh, not nope. the newer ones. What? Not the newer ones. Well, it's you the can't, worst thing in the you world. Can't, really? Uh, well, everything goes through the lightning port. I know, but wow. I just figured that they... Unless you're using Bluetooth, but... Which like you can before, use Bluetooth. I'll, well, I'll give easily. you an example. Before the before the podcast, I charge my phone up because when I'm away from my computer uh, in the attic, uh, I have to use the headphone jack instead. So I have to make sure that my phone is charged every week. Wow! It's I the never dumbest thing in the world. I absolutely so anybody hate with the the newer iPhone and up won't be able to charge their phone and use this thing unless right. you're using some type of Bluetooth headset, which a lot of people do. But how do you use a Bluetooth headset with this dongle. I don't. I don't know if. If I mean, if you connect Bluetooth to the phone, you then should be able to use that headphones and microphone with any app that's on the phone. So I would assume it would work. I know, but then you don't get the game audio. Are you talking about with the the yeah, Splatoon with device this, specifically? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm saying this can, is this only like because what's weird about this is that the, <laughs> John, I'm worked up. You're, yeah, you're <laughs> fired up now, the man. The problem that they Your head's about they're to launching explode. this alongside with Splatoon. I understand that, but. Is this how they're going to handle game audio, period? Like, yes, it's a Splatoon mm. thing, mm. but is this how it's going to have to be? You know what I'm saying? And if that's the case, then well, for iPhone other users games are where just you're, out of Other luck. games where you're not, going to, you're not going to use the, um, or worry about hearing game audio at the same time, you'll just be connected to the phone app, which will be connected to the oh, network. No I, no, I totally understand that. But like, I, I want both. I want the game audio too. Is what I'm used to. It's the, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm asking for something crazy to be able to yeah, party no, 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 chat no. and hear the game audio. I agree right. with you, but I, you, it sounded like you were asking if you're wanting to use this device and if you're wanting to use that splitter device dongle thing, then yes. But I was just saying it's not the only avenue if game audio is not an issue for you. That's all that I was saying. Right. Cause I could just. It sounded like you were confused on if you're always going to have to use this device. I was just trying to clarify. Yeah, I, well, gotcha. I, I'm trying to get to, too, like, with the popularity of the iPhone, as mm-hmm. it goes forward, and maybe as it keeps the, the you know, eighth inch out of the phone, will I be able to game chat and charge my phone? Mm. Yeah, there are ways that you can do it, but you, it's not, it's not um, the way that it was before, or the way that it would be on a lot of the other third-party phones. I got you. Currently. Stupid. All of it. Moving on. <laughs> what else you got, Chris? Um, it's so infuriating to me for some strange reason. Like it, I understand. Like when I no, first I saw it, this diagram, I was like, oh, you're kidding. Mm-hmm. That, like, really? That's how we're solving this problem is by splitting it up and having six wires running all over the place? Right. Like it, and the it, answer is yes. Well, it takes the portability away from the whole thing. Yep. You know what I mean? You are mm-hmm. you are wired. Let, yeah. You are officially let's be a, overwired. Let's be a handset. Actually. Let's be a handheld console that you have to sit in one place and play. <laughs> you know what no I'm saying? The basketball make any sense. Yeah. for you. No. Like, what am I supposed to gather all this up in my arms and ugh? It's called a backpack, Gabe. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Lord, I'm it's the freaking we- walking around looking like doggone Ghostbuster. <laughs> trying to talk and play Splatoon. Gonna, there'll be a switch pack. Don't worry. They'll have that coming mm. out soon. Yeah, right. It'll have all the wires that you need. Yeah. You'll look like a spider. Right. Go ahead, Chris. It's, yeah. It's, it's Nintendo. It's, it's the way they do things. It's, uh... <laughs> Anyways, um, we were talking about the iPhone a minute ago, so I'm going to kind of stick in the Apple world for a second. Apple had their WWDC uh, yesterday, and... With it, they announced the upcoming bracelets. version of macOS uh, High Sierra. They're going to be getting support from Steam VR, and the the vibe is going to be coming to where it's going to be supported on the Mac side. So that was something that was really cool because up until this point, there's not been any 
which there's only Vive and Oculus at the moment, but there's not been any official VR support on the Macintosh. And so huh. now that stuff, and they specifically are teaming with Valve, and they showed a demo where they were doing um, a Star Wars demo on the Vive uh, with a gentleman from ILM kind of showing all the different kinds of stuff they could do running real time on a current iMac, which an iMac isn't even the highest version, unless you're talking about the new iMac Pro that they're coming out with. But regardless, I'm just talking about the Vive part. So that was really cool for someone like me. Now, am I going to be buying a Vive? I don't have any plans to do that because they're still really expensive. But it's cool to see that all this stuff is opening up even more. And if the VR support from Steam is coming, maybe even more games support will come to the Mac side. I know that Windows is like where the game's stuff resides, and that's not really ever been a Mac thing, or it was way, way, way back in the day. But it's nice to see a little bit of love getting pushed on that side um, because I use Macintoshes for a lot of different creative stuff, and I really enjoy the OS, and it's nice to see game side getting supported a little bit more as well there you go how much is agreed how much is a vive i think there's still uh well eight hundred dollars i think that's right now when it's bundled with the the uh, hand controllers i okay. think you can get it without the hand controllers and it's, it did get a discount at some point i don't remember what it is off the top of my head it might be 600 now without those yeah was, maybe hmm, that's a lot of money yeah yeah everything i'm seeing just a, a quick google search is 800 bucks yeah doggy you better mm-hmm. be playing some vr you buy some for 800 dollars, right um so we talked about it chris alluded to the overwatch double xp weekend mm-hmm. and these poor guys over at battleborn <laughs> oh jeez yeah oh no what's up well they <laughs> they they're having their free weekend this weekend what? oh boy but nobody will care because they'll be playing Overwatch. <laughs> yeah. I haven't played Battleborn. I heard it's really fun. I think Lim, the, the bad gamer, he told me that it was really fun and he had bought it. Hmm. I think it was Battleborn. And uh, so I kind of want to try Battleborn. But then again, I won't be home. And let's be honest here. I want to play Overwatch. Yeah. Um, I haven't played hmm. Battleborn. Have you seen any of that, Chris? Is it? I know it's supposed to be rivals of Overwatch, but I don't know how close it is. Well, it is and it isn't. It's they're not the same gameplay wise. Battleborn, they are similar in that they have a bunch of characters and those characters. I don't know what they if they call them heroes or what they call them, um, but they mm-hmm. all may have different abilities and they're all kind of weird and quirky. If I remember right, I think there's one where there's a, a penguin inside of a mech suit. So there's all this like weird, goofy stuff. Um, But the gameplay itself, in terms of the things that you're doing, as I understand it, it's more in uh, in line with the way that like a MOBA plays. So like Heroes of the Storm. So like there'll be three lanes and you've got to push to a certain area. And there may be multiple game types on there. I'm not sure. But Uh I've always heard and from what little bit I've seen that the gameplay itself is actually rather different in terms of the objectives you complete when you compare it to Overwatch. Really the only similarity with Overwatch is that, hey, you've got to cast of a bunch of cool characters with weird abilities. Okay. That's where, that, as I understand it, that's the main similarity between the two. I got you. So if you want to try Battleborn and maybe you don't have Overwatch <laughs> and you're not trying to get that double XP if you do have it, <laughs> which I don't know why you would, um, but go try Battleborn this weekend. There yep. you go. Chris, you think you'll try Battleborn this weekend? Uh, no, I will not. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big negatory there, good buddy. <laughs> this weekend will be all Overwatch <laughs> because I want me some daggum skins. <laughs> Maybe you could get some skins in Battleborn while it's free. I I I, I don't care. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I'm just being real. Hey, at least he's honest. Oh, if I were going to play something that's not Overwatch, uh, I'd probably play Paladins because... It's a lot of fun too. And it's actually, it's more a ripoff of, if you will, just using that term. Sorry, Paladins <laughs> fans. Don't Ooh, yikes. Me. But it's more of a Overwatch <laughs> clone than, as I understand, the Battleborn. But I'd rather play, if I'm not going to play Overwatch, I'd rather play Overwatch ish. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not going to play Overwatch, I'm going to play Overwatch. Exactly. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. Oh man, I feel so bad for Battleborn. That, uh, in, in the story, they were obviously talking about. Uh, how the similarities and how people view them as the same and how the guys over Battleborn were like, look, we were already announced and had a date coming out when Overwatch yeah. was coming out. So yeah, couldn't just pull the plug, mm-hmm. even though they were going to destroy us. You know, they've had three and a half million players, which, hey, it's nothing to sneeze at. No, no, no that's good. But Overwatch has yeah, had a lot more than that. 
Mm. Slightly. Yeah, in the multiples. Chris, what else you got? Um, so ahead of E3, Sony has come out and done a little bit of talking about some things. Uh, just a few little announcements just on kind of where they are with different things. Hopefully this means it's because they're not going to focus on these aspects uh, during the actual press conference. Um, but they said that they have almost six hit. They have almost hit 60 million PlayStation 4 users. Not quite there, but about to be there. They have announced that they've sold over 1 million VR headsets, which the last time they provided numbers, it was around 900,000. So not a huge jump from the last time they announced it, but it's over a million mm. now. Yeah. One it's nicer to say over a million. Yeah. One in five PlayStation 4 consoles being sold since November have been a PlayStation 4 Pro. Oh. And then Horizon Zero Dawn is now sitting at 3.4 million copies sold through. And mm -hmm. then um, wow. the European boss, Jim Ryan was asked um, a bit about backwards compatibility. And he had a quote that uh, a lot of people have kind of been latching onto and, and discussing back and forth. Um, he said that we have dabbled with backwards compatibility and I can say that it is one of those features that is much requested, but is not actually used much. And of course this sent some people um, into a bit of an uproar because obviously Microsoft offers backwards compatibility on the Xbox one. Uh, and just, I don't know, it, how it was timed up kind of perfectly, but Ars Technica put out uh, a story. This was crazy. They did. Yeah, uh, the fact did, that it was the same week is nuts. Yeah. And so they did a study um, uh, based on 930,000 Xbox One users on Xbox Live sampled <laughs> not, between September. Not, two, not 200 people like, we, like they yeah, used to no. polls. Yeah, almost a million. <laughs> yeah. um, but this is a sample space between September 26th of 2016 through February 12th of 2017. And this is just a high level of how the breakdown happens. So out of that time frame of Xbox One users, 54.7% of people were playing an Xbox One game. Which is low. That was lower than I mm -hmm. thought it'd be. Yeah. 16.5% hmm. was spent uh, during that time doing Netflix. 6.7% was using the TV app. 66 .6 was doing uh, YouTube on Xbox One. 14.1% was doing other non-game related apps and 1.5% of people played Xbox 360 backwards compatible games. Wow. So mm. in the end, only about 1.5% of the 1.6 billion minutes of Xbox <laughs> right. One usage time <laughs> wow. that they tracked was spent Playing an Xbox 360 backwards compatible It's so compatible true. Game. It's I mean, and, and this is That's not the first. pretty incredible. And this is not the first time that that we've we've even had to, we've talked about this on this podcast. Like no, the backwards compatibility thing is such a value added piece that people don't actually use. They just like it at first. Yes, you know when you yeah. first have a brand new console coming out and you say it's backwards compatible, you're like, oh yay, because I have this whole library of games I don't want to leave behind. But once mm -hmm. you're into the thing, there's not really a lot of looking back. I, I don't do it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't do it. No. Yeah, that's really, really good data to have. And I think that's there's your case for Sony just not doing it. Well, I it's think, just funny that people got in arms about it. It's like yeah. the numbers don't support you being upset. Mm -hmm. Well, it's all about options. Gamers want the option. If they it, they just want it to be available, I can I can understand. Yeah, I would want it to be available. It doesn't mean I'm going to play it, but you know, I would love for it to you be available. You just like the choice. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, having the choice is always is always nice for consumers. But in this case, man, that data that's that's some solid data right there. That's just like okay, we need to probably focus our attention somewhere else. Yeah, so this like on it, exclusives. It's Microsoft. one of those things where both sides have extremely valid arguments. So Amen, on yeah. on the Xbox side, so they had said it's not coming. You know, oh, we can't do this, and then it's all impossible. of a sudden, boom, shadow drop. We did it. Yep. And it's like, okay, well, so they did it. But you have to look at the whole context. What's shadow drop? It means you drop something um, without announcing it first. Oh, it's okay. not really shadow drop because it didn't come right away, but I was just using that term. But shadow drop means like when you drop a game, you're like, and it's available today kind of thing, where yep. there wasn't any lead up to it. It wasn't like announced beforehand. Um, so Microsoft, when they did this, was I think it was the first E3 where Phil Spencer had taken over. Uh, and was the, the head of Xbox at that point. And, mm. you know, Microsoft was having all their issues in terms of... <laughs> it was just of, last year, right? Yeah, well... Uh, was it just last year's year? E3 that they I announced? I it was the year before. Was it two years ago? I don't know. Either way, 
point is, I don't use it. I'm one of the people who, you know, doesn't touch it. So I don't yeah. know. But regardless, when Microsoft did it, it was very much a PR move. It was a oh, let's yeah, get goodwill. Oh, let's, absolutely. let's get all mm. this love and everything. And it worked. And it was absolutely we were saying a little bit earlier how, oh, Nintendo, you know, you need to have voice chat because this is a 2009 technology. Even if your customer's not really going to use it that much or you don't think they will, there are going to be people that do it. And in this industry, this is a thing that people expect. So you need to have it kind of like mm -hmm. Netflix. It's like the fact that Netflix isn't on the switch. People were up in arms about it. And the hardcore were like, why are you buying the switch to watch Netflix, play your games? Right. And that totally makes sense. But at the same time, it's like, this just kind of seems like a standard. Microsoft yeah. has come out and made backwards compatibility a checkbox on the back. So yep. now people want that checkbox. Now, if you remember back in the PlayStation three days when it was, you know, extremely expensive when it first dropped, it was backwards compatible with PlayStation two. And I believe PlayStation one as well. Yep. That was part of what mm. made the cost so expensive. The reason that they removed those aspects was to get the price of the console down and to make it slimmer because it actually had PS2 parts inside of it running because the architecture was so different. They couldn't emulate that. And way. it did stay running PS1 games just for those okay. that didn't know the PS3. So whenever they removed all that and then saw, Oh, people aren't freaking out because we removed backwards compatibility. Sony basically looked and said, well, this isn't an important feature. And then all of their data as they had in the back end, was saying, look, people don't really use this. So we're not going to focus in on it. Now, Microsoft made this move and it was a very good move and it gave them a lot of good press and it's definitely has to, you have to believe has helped them in like stay in the fight, if you will, in the whole console war this generation, but it cost them a lot of money to R and D away to emulate these games because when they came out and said, Oh, it's not doable. They weren't saying that because it really was. They were just saying that because it's going to cost a lot of money for us to do this. This is going to not going to be a cheap thing for us to do. But the investment paid off for them because of all the goodwill and all the positive spin and has helped them go, you know, mm -hmm. work out for them. Even though it's not being used as much. Exactly. But that doesn't matter. The, it's like, it's again, the same thing kind of with, with Scorpio. So like if Scorpio comes out and it's like, we have the most powerful console. Now, if they don't announce a single new exclusive and there's not really anything to play on it that you can't also play on a Sony platform or PC... Well, I guess everything will be playable on PC, but something you can't also play on a Sony platform, it's going to kind of be like a moot point that you're more powerful because the games are across everywhere. Right. But it's a, it's all about that mind share. It's about saying we are the most powerful. There's exactly. value in having mm -hmm. that mind share. The same thing with backwards compatibility. It gives you mind share that, hey, this is a very pro-consumer thing. And it is a very pro-consumer thing. But the thing is, is that Microsoft is a much more financially viable and healthy company at the moment than Sony is. Sony, to go into the PlayStation 4... And to work out a way and to hardware or, or to software or so hardware engineer a way to make backwards compatibility specifically with the PlayStation 3 work on PS4 would take a lot of cost and a lot of R&D. And me as a Sony fan, someone who enjoys Sony first party games, I love their exclusives. I don't want you wasting your time or your money on that stuff. I want you to put mm. that money into studios. Totally that are agree. Me brand new experiences. Yep. Totally agree. So for Sony. Use that money. Yep. Yeah. For Sony, it absolutely makes sense to be like, look. This is a feature a lot of people yell about, but they don't use, so it doesn't make sense for us to do. And it makes sense on Microsoft's side to be like, hey, yeah, this isn't something many people use, but this will garner a lot of goodwill, and we really need that right now. So they went that route. Yeah. They're both, it's like they're both valid and, and make sense in their perspective sections because they both make sense for that company at that time. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, Chris. It's just like... Sony does not need to worry about this anymore. The backwards compatibility thing, that's Xbox. They won that they won that battle. Give that to them. Focus your money on other R&D and and get things done. Get another, you know, first party developer together and have a new game because that's what people as, you know, clear that's what people clearly want in this. So, that's that's really interesting on both sides. I think it, I I find that really cool. I love that 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 they took the time and money to do that research because that is data that they will keep for a long, long time. And that's that's really important to, to have and to know about. And I will say that considering that Microsoft did backwards compatibility this generation and it'll be part of Scorpio and so forth, I fully expect whenever PS5 or whatever's next for Sony comes out, that it will be backwards compatible with PS4. I feel like at this point, because you can engineer right. that going forward, it's harder to go back and reverse engineer it. And I right. feel like they'll build that in simply because... At this point, it's becoming, like I was saying, a voice chat is with Nintendo earlier. It's now become, yet again, in a weird way, a checkbox thing. It's like, if you don't have this, 
that's going to look really bad if their next console doesn't have backwards compatibility with PS4. And so I feel mm-hmm. like they're going to build it in. I mean, then again, it's Sony and Sony does kind of puts their foot in the ground and doesn't move sometimes. So maybe they won't. But I feel like it's easier to engineer that into the thing from the get go than it is to go back and add it in later. Yeah, so, right. We'll see. But it was just well very interesting. Really interesting. To, yeah, it, it, like Gabe said earlier, it was just so crazy that that quote happened to come out. And at the same time, Ars Technica is dropping this article they've been working on for months. You know, I, it, it, it seemed like. Oh, it, it it backed up Sony in such a way that you were like, oh, you know, when somebody makes such a good point and then it gets yeah. backed up, you almost feel like, oh, gosh, like it, it just mm. it's it's so bolstered what he was saying that you were like, oh, geez, like doggone it. Like it it, it ruined the discussion. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? In a, yeah, in a way. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still it's still a valid point that, hey, but it's nice to have and it's good to have it there for because like, for instance, if if the PlayStation four was backwards compatible with uh, PS three. The only thing I would ever use it for that I can think of right now is metal gear. Like I wouldn't, that's the only reason I still have my PS three is because I want to be able to go back and play metal gear games. Right. So, I mean, I would use it a little bit, but it wouldn't be one of those things where I'm like, Oh man, can't yep. wait to play this again. It's like, yeah. Nope, I, I'm very mm. much a move forward. You'd use for the it most like part 1.5% kind of, of the time. Yeah. It would be very <laughs> right. seldom. Yeah. Uh, I, I have other stories, but I think I'm out. All right. Well, I have one last thing that I'm going to mention then. Do it. This is more for me and the people like me. (laughs) Um, There is going (laughs) to be, there is going to be a metal gear concert. Yes. Saw that. And it's going to be going, it's coming to Japan first. There's going to be a concert, uh, in the Oryx theater in Okasawa or Osaka. Osaka, mm-hmm. that's how I'm going to say it, July 30th, and then there's going to be one at the Tokyo International Forum, August 2nd, and they are they have said right now they are going to be having a tour that's coming to the U.S. and Europe, and I don't care where it comes in the U.S., I'm going there and I'm watching. <laughs> really? How many I, drove if it's in New to Na- yeah, I drove cool. to Nashville to go to a concert. If it's somewhere at least in that, between here and Nashville or that radius, I will drive there and go to this concert. So New York is out. Oh, yeah. Is New York out? That's a good question, Ed. Uh, New York, Chicago. I don't know. It just depends on if I can afford to get there. I would like to go to those places. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm not driving to New York. That's not happening. So Nashville, I could at least drive to. That's like yeah. the extent. How, say they do 10 shows within a 15 hour drive of your house. Yes. I will do it to one. How many? Well, I, I only go to one. I don't need to go to seven of them. I'm not that crazy. Well, you went to two of the shows yeah. that you did for Nashville. Well, yeah, but I mean, I'm not going to go because these tickets, it, when you convert what they're costing right now in, in Japan, it would come out to be about $90 a ticket, you know, for, probably for the baseline ticket. I'm assuming their tickets will go up from there. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to drive to two different concerts and paying 90, possible 90 plus per ticket each time. And then the vacation time to get out there. And then, I mean, there's comes cool. a lot. So let's say they do Dallas that. and they do Oklahoma City. Oh, yeah, I would do or that. Or go to both. I, w- I would look into doing that. But if they did like <laughs> Nashville and, you know, Dallas, well, I'd probably only do Dallas. I wouldn't do mm. Nashville. I got you. I got you. Well, I hope that it comes close to you. <laughs> yeah. I know, so man. Do I. For your sake. Oh, I what if they gosh. just do LA and New York? I'll find a way. I'll go to one of them. That's what I'm saying. So you would go to one if, like, I, you I said would, they're only doing two I would places do what in I Japan. Can. Yeah, I would do what I can to get to one of those places. Hmm. I mean, it's not wow. like a set in stone kind of thing. I mean, obviously, I've got Stacy to discuss it with, and all this and that. But I mean, I feel like this is oh, one of the last. Up, I'm sure. This is one of the last things Konami can do to have like goodwill towards me because I don't want to play necessarily Metal Gear Survive. And if they bring out more Metal Gear games, I don't know if I'm going to be interested because they don't have Kojima tied to them. But this is all music from the Canon series. It's like, man. I love so many of those soundtracks. It's just like, I would love to mm. be able to see this played live. There you go. Yeah. So I like it. Yep. Yeah. Eduardo. Yes. I. Yeah. Do we have free games yet for this month? Yeah, we do. Can I hear about them? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? What do you say? <laughs> Over on the PlayStation, we got killing floor two. Oh. Mm. There you go. And life is strange. Oh, so there you go. Oh, I do want to play that one. Are you excited about that? I mean, if you like to hear poorly written teens complain, oh, you will love this game. I don't I like hearing well written 
teens complain. Oh, well, the, how about, do you like to hear teens played by 40-year-olds that don't sound like teens? Do you like that? <laughs> yes. That sounds incredible. Then Let's do it. this is the game yeah. for you. <laughs> Mom, can I get the keys? <laughs> <laughs> I just, Jeez. there's one guy in the, in, the, in the campus that's like, hey, so what are you guys doing this weekend? Oh, man. And I'm like, Duh. hey, bro. I don't, yeah. I was like, maybe teens in the 80s movies talked like that? Yeah, but, like, yeah. Right. Sounds like I'm sending out an Amber Alert. I know. And then maybe he was a teen actor in the 80s. And maybe that's why they were like, perfect casting. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) There you go. Uh, Let's see. We got for the PS3, Abyss Odyssey and WRC5 World Rally Championship. Mm. And then on the PS Vita with Cross Buy with PS4, Neon Chrome and Spy Chameleon. Ooh. You wouldn't so want to be a go. chameleon if you were a spy. I like that title. You'd be a great spy. Mm-hmm. Blending in with everything. That's right. You don't see the me. trees, the people. <laughs> <laughs> Over on the Xbox. Uh, let's see. On the Xbox One from June 1st through the 30th, Speedrunners. So dumb. Can they just make it the month, please? Stop doing I know, this. right? <laughs> Broken for up ju- half the month. For June 16th through July 15th, <laughs> Watch Dogs. <laughs> oh, really? Really? Hey. Do, oh, interesting. Do that. <laughs> you stopped him in his tracks. <laughs> that was hilarious. Like, yeah. <laughs> I still don't like the like, name. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dragging. <laughs> From June 15th to <clears throat> June 16th. Watch dogs. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Good luck trying to get that in one exactly. day, 24 hours. <laughs> uh, June 1st to the 15th on the 360 and the Xbox One, Assassin's Creed 3, which I've never played, so I'm excited about that. Well, don't get too excited. Good luck to you. I know, I know. I'll see what happens. I'm going in with low expectations, though, so maybe I'll in- enjoy it. There you go. That's what I'm hoping for. There you go. That's the right attitude and for you. June 16th. <laughs> for you. <laughs> for you. <laughs> I like that clarifier yeah. at the end. June yeah, 16th sorry. through the 30th, Dragon Age Origins. Oh, okay. Oranges. Sorry. Oranges, yeah. Yes. Oranges, yes. Dragon Age is <laughs> supposed to be a good game. Is it? I think so, yeah. I don't know much. Uh, about a lot it. of people liked Inquisition. Oh yeah, that's right. I heard about that game one time. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when we were trying to be the voiceover for it, is when you heard about it. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Get yourself some free games. I like that. I I think I would get to really enjoy when you have to do the Nintendo Switch games. When that becomes a part of it, you'd be like, oh, "Over on yeah. the Switch, Donkey Kong." <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Uncle Pac Man. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> Uncle Pat. Yeah, I like that, Uncle Pat. <laughs> what about the YouTube channel, that there, brethren? Over on the YouTube, new this week, we've got The Witcher 3 Blood and Wine Part 9. So Tim was able to get some in there. Well done, yep. sir. Thank you. And uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Episode 2, Under Pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, looking at our mm-hmm. top 10 YouTube videos, combining the average oh, watch time way, and views. Huh? By the way, did Danger Zone ever use Highway to the Danger Zone in that game? Nah, man. Oh, they are ridiculous. Oh, <laughs> that would have cost money. I, I, oh, geez. That's very true. <laughs> or to take the game outside. I know. Right? That was a missed opportunity. They're like, oh, <clears> we were going to have the sky in this game, but the sky costs money. The sky wants royalties. I felt really bad, too, because Danger Zone actually put in a really sly reference to the movie L.A. Story with Steve Martin. Yes. And I picked up on it and tweeted out hey, congrats, kudos, or whatever. And one of the guys from the company replied with more, like, hidden L.A. story lines and stuff. Man. I'm like, oh, man, I feel bad because this guy's really cool, but the game is, he's cooler than his game. I'll just say that. <laughs> kudos to you, Ed, for, like, reaching out to people and just giving them, like, hey, I appreciate this. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, it's don't, don't like do your, Don't listen to the podcast, but just... No, yes, no, no, no. Screw, <laughs> screw your game, but love the reference. <laughs> right. Exactly. exactly. I appreciate the wit. <laughs> right. Yeah, there you go. Uh, top 10 YouTube videos from May 30th to June 5th. Number 10, Mafia 3 DLC, Stones Unturned. Ooh. Number 9, Watch Dogs 2, Part 5, Bottom Dollar Fail. Mm-hmm. Number 8, The Witcher 3, Blood and Wine, Part 8. Yeah, Tim. Ooh, nice. nice. Look at that. Number 7, Watch Dogs 2, Part 6, Bottom Dollar Complete. Mm. Number six, Married to the Games, episode 246. We need more lumens. Yeah, we do. 
Oop. Number five, Ori in the Blind Forest, part 14. Don't mess with Swamp! Love it. Perfect, as always. Number <laughs> four, Watch Dogs 2, part 19, Paint Job. Number three, Watch Dogs 2, part 48, Ghost Signals. Number two, Danger Zone. What? Uh, what? <laughs> What? It, it was our most watched video of the week. I watched as it. Far as, as far as watch time went. I watched it. We need it. to bash it more so we get more I'm views. Telling but number one, Gabe and Chris react to The Last of Us Part 2. Oh, I was hoping it was a different one. Nah, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks, Ed. I was, Thank I was one of the people that let Danger Zone play. I watched it as I uh, went to sleep yeah. earlier this week. <laughs> and I was, so, it started with so much promise. Like when you go and you listen to it, especially knowing now what it ends up being, mm-hmm. hearing Ed at the beginning of the game is so <laughs> crushing. He's like, oh so man, this funny. is so fun. Okay, we're doing the training. We're inside. Oh, I love this game. Isn't this, guy, isn't this game great, you guys? Oh, you guys, mm-hmm. we're in it's such a treat. Uh, but guys, you guys, you guys, you guys, this game is going to be so much fun. Smash Breaker. <laughs> It's bad right. breaker. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah's working out in the background. Let's get it, guys. I know. <laughs> it was so funny. And I, went back and, and I went back and, and listened and I was and like, two. yep, this p- mic really picks her up. Yeah. And double time. Let's do it. You can do <laughs> that it. That is awesome. <laughs> Give me two more reps. Yep. <laughs> Come on, shake your body, baby. Do that conga. That's so awesome. <laughs> And Ed's all full oh, of life. Yeah, I got to go back and watch that now. <clears throat> yeah, Ed's like, oh, man, I cannot wait. To- okay. All right. We're still inside. Okay. looks like we're doing the training. All right. Well, we're still in like the test test phase. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Test phase one. Test phase two. Test phase three. Okay. We'll probably be outside here in a minute. We'll just finish these up real quick. <laughs> I didn't watch long enough for it to see you do the long turn into 45 we're not getting out of here. minutes later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're on test phase three, and we're still inside. <laughs> still indoors. Man, the ceiling is awful low. There is, uh, I do recall, there is that moment where it's, it's not even a gradual thing. It's a realization of, wait, I'm almost done with this game? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in the dog so You hear right. that sense of dread? It, is this going to be it? Yeah, this is <laughs> yeah. not it, is it? Yeah. Is this it? Huh? This ain't it, is it? And then oh he starts to rationalize already. He's like, well, I did only play $12, but... Uh, <laughs> exactly. Right. They did throw in that L.A. story thing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, last week we asked great. you guys a question. This week was no different. We asked you guys, what are you wanting to see at E3 2017? Starting over at the forum, Robert Daryl Good Jr. Mm-hmm. The third. Before Halo 4, every Halo game was essentially been out been about the war between humanity and the covenant from various perspectives, usually that of master chief John one, one seven with halo four, three, four, three industries stated. It would be a personal story about master chief and they've been chipping away at him the whole way. A particularly poignant moment occurs when Cornad, yeah, Cortana who has lived beyond the normal lifespan of an AI like her and knows she will die soon and who has always expressed more personality and emotional depth than the chief, uh, than the chief says, before this is all over, promise me you'll figure out which one of us is the machine. Ooh. Unfortunately, 343 also stated that Halo 4 was the beginning of a trilogy and 5 didn't have an ending. There was literally no story conclusion at the end of the game. I love the game. What I don't love is the fact that I've been given a cliffhanger for going on two years now. Halo 6, please. Mm. Spoiler alert after the fact. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that Halo 4 is the beginning of a trilogy. <laughs> I know. At the end of what would be a trilogy. <laughs> right. <laughs> they live Oz. Hi, everyone. I'm going to... <laughs> that's, Hello. That's what it says. I'm going to crazy prediction here for i'm going to crazy prediction here for fun well they're not going to correct english for fun (laughs) (laughs) or carl (laughs) is that carl Carl. that's carl leave him alone (laughs) it's usually my reading love you carl that makes it not sound like english right but i read that one right uh i know i see what he's saying must be autocorrect that's what he's saying 
He's saying uh, it was. It's what, what's it's from I'm his, going I, to do a crazy prediction here. Is essentially he, what yes, he said. It was like a re- a regular prediction and a crazy one. And he's saying, "Hey, I'm going to crazy predictions for fun." Like he's jumping to I'm cra- going to crazy, crazy predictions. predictions here yeah. for fun. I got you. Yeah. All right. It was sent from yeah, an iPhone. Spill it. You know, uh, n- PlayStation <laughs> announced. <laughs> PlayStation oh, yeah, announced. I can't fix that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that is on him. This is My never bad. coming out. Is I it? tried, Carl. Oh, yeah. I tried. <laughs> well, you know where to find yeah. us. PlayStation announced new portable handheld that is a PS4 controller, but with a screen and won't have a memory card that costs more than the console. Huh. Nintendo, start treating us like adults and stop charging <laughs> us for games we've bought an hundred times. <laughs> No way. <laughs> and 100 times. Microsoft go hard with the Scorpio and only charge $50 more than the Xbox One. They also have a new IP which will release with the new console. I will be happy if any of these hit, but I doubt you it. But I doubt right. you it. Once again, thanks for all the content and humor. <laughs> And have an awesome you E3. Thank you, you for the humor. That's someone playing an incredulous game of tag. I doubt you it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, um, over on the... Thank you, Carl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> over I appreciate you. I do appreciate I it, too. I'm being serious. Over on... Laugh. Uh, over well, it's because it was funny. It was so that's that's looked like my typing with my feet on my phone. <laughs> uh, over on the Discord, uh, Arctic Warlock says Cuphead may be one of those, and you can buy it. Uh, I'm sorry, Cuphead. Okay, I want to see. Sorry, <laughs> it's so hard to know where the conversation starts on Discord. <laughs> Kaboski, I want to see Cuphead get a release date. More JRPGs for the Xbox One and Sunset Overdrive 2. To where oh, Nova yeah, Beyond be had that. said, Cuphead seriously needs to come out already. It's been way too long. Uh, Very true. Mm. Uh, Dat Ninja Dev, PS4 Pro, Price Drop, and Destiny 2 Bundle. That is all. Ooh. I like that. Um, a skewed one said, I don't know what I want to see. I'm always more excited seeing news on games that, I ha- that haven't been announced or leaked than getting more mm-hmm. info on things I already know about. Amen. Yeah. Preach on that. I love that. I totally agree. Over on Facebook, we got Mama Bread fan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she says, maybe MTTG cast in cosplay. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm, I'm oh. super, I was super impressed she actually knew that word and what it meant. <laughs> Good for her. So yeah, I'm she, going as router. She's an impressive lady. I'm going as Placentia. See, we just have to change t-shirts and we I, need to go. But I can't go as yep. Gabe. No, nope, I'm going as Darius Rucker. You're going to have to go with somebody else. Uh, yeah, because I can't go as Gabe. Actually, I have a beard. I'll go as Chris then. Ooh, nice. There we go. I like it. Okay, I'll go as Tracer then. <laughs> yes! <laughs> That's way better. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, James Younger, I can't wait to see State of Decay 2 and Red Dead. They are my main ones I've been waiting for. Nice. Mm-hmm. And we've got... Uh, Herman Scott, I want to see more on the PS4 Spider-Man game. They haven't said a word about it since it's first sh- since it first showed. Hmm. hmm. I know that's right. I'll take a little I bit more. about sp- that. It, we'll see Spider-Man for sure. Uh, at midnight underscore Dan over on Twitter. Of course, more scope Scorpio info and price, but I want dates for Days Gone and God of War Three. Which that's not mm. what he meant. He meant the new God of War, right? Which yeah. is not three. Uh, P.S. God of War oranges. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. P.S. Last of Us Two is a long way away. Sorry. So he's going with Chris on that one. Oh man. Uh, Mark Two at Tufus. This is silly, but I want check that. I need an SNES Mini with an option to download additional games. Oh. Well, I mean. <laughs> 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 we know the SNES <laughs> Mini is coming. I don't know about that. You, download additional games, Mark. Listen, you want what you want. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, I get it. Uh, rain flow flowing with rain. Give your boy his Bloodborne two. Come on now, Bloodborne two. 
no thank you. Did not finish the first one or even close to the first level. <laughs> you know where to find us. Facebook.com slash Married to the Games. Twitter.com slash MTTG cast. Married to the Games.com. Come check out the forums. YouTube.com slash Married to the Games. And now on Discord. Thank yeah. you guys so much for supporting your boys. I mean, Patreon. Well, both. But also Discord. <laughs> both. Through the Patreon. Yeah, it's both. And listen, not to not to hype up the Patreon too much, but it is so easy to pump out extra stuff to you guys through the Patreon and through mm-hmm. that SS- RSS. So there'll probably be like some videos coming, more audio. I know that Chris and Ed did something like two weeks ago that's kind of a thank you plus some video game talk. And it's so easy to just pump that out to the people on on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Yep. So thank you for being there. Come check out your boys, patreon.com slash MTTG. Uh, Ed. Uh, rate us on iTunes. <laughs> leave a review. That's, I always say that to give myself time to think of something. Do. I know. I <laughs> and uh, uh, Tim will get a free Frosty. Ooh. Hey. Another hey. one. And another right? one. And another Ooh. one. Another one. Well, let's get into some questions. All right, we're going to start with our patrons on Discord. El Scorcho, do you read books? If so, do you have a favorite author or favorite book? My favorite author is Michael Crichton. Um, I, but my favorite book is The Hobbit. Oh, oh, nice. Uh, no, no I don't read books. <laughs> no, I've, I mean, I've read books. Uh, the Harry Potter series got me back into books back in the day. Mm-hmm. They, they really are fantastic. They're great reads. Um, and I'm a big fan of J.K. Rowling and everything she does. So that's yeah, yeah. that's me. And let me say too, I have read books, <laughs> but I don't read books. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Right. I haven't. No, we got you. I haven't read through a full book i don't even remember the last time but i've read through all of the lord of the Rings series and the hobbit and the silmarillion you have I've read yeah oh my gosh wow and i've read through you know various other um non-fiction things you know over the years but the last book that i read uh i know i had bought after steve jobs died i bought his autobiography that was um, a big old book but i don't, mm. I, don't oh, nice. I don't think i even finished i think i got about halfway through um when I stopped because of, you know, whatever reason, I don't even remember. Because of boring? Um, no, I, I it, it was it cr- a good book. Because it crashed on you? No, it was a good book. I just, <laughs> I don't remember what, what it was. Huh. But, mm. yeah. Yeah, I used to read a lot more than I do now. Um, I believe I've read everything Stephen King's written, except for, I think there's a couple online-only things that I that have slipped really? past me. Yeah, yeah, I'm a huge Stephen King fan. Wow. Okay, favorite... F- favorite Stephen King book, go. Uh, probably it's a tie between It and The Stand. Those are both really nice. Good. Interesting. Oh, there you go. Nice. Very cool. Golly. Yeah. I was going to say Lady Great in the question. Water. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you could. <laughs> I was just are you, are you excited King. for that It remake or whatever? I, I am. I'm curious to see what they do. It looks good. I'm, and, uh, I yeah, actually kind of want to see it. About and I'm it not too. a yeah. scary yeah. movie guy. Nice. Wow. I'm not a nice. scary anything right, guy. I never saw right? the first one. Well, me either, but... No, yeah. neither did I. All right, moving on. Mark Boucher, what's your favorite movie that everyone else seems to hate? Oh. <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Wow. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's not my favorite movie, but it's a movie that I enjoy that other... I got a lot of crap for on the show. Uh-huh. Uh, Go ahead. The Bedazzled. <laughs> 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 Just for the record, Scotty Lindsay had my back, so I'm expecting you to have it again, sir. Uh, Scotty Lindsay's a fourth grade teacher. Don't matter. Right. He's a good. He's a good man. Awesome. He's a good man. He's a good man. I'm just saying, hangs out with children a lot. <laughs> but he gets paid to. That is funny. <laughs> that is so funny. Bedazzled. Ed. Oh man. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. There was a really obscure uh, Steve Martin film called A Simple Twist of Fate that did horribly that I thought was kind of cute. There you go. Tim? There you go. I mean, a lot. it goes both ways on this one, but a lot, some people love Anchorman and some people don't. Like, a lot of my 
older friends are like they don't get it. So, I, I but Anchor Man's definitely one of my favorites because I can quote that movie no problem. Um, the movie I like that other people uh, don't like. I have two, and they're both John Travolta movies. What I know, you like two Ooh. John Travolta movies? Yes, I do. <laughs> I like more than that, but these are the two that other people don't like. Okay. Uh, Face Off and oh, okay. Broken Arrow. All right. I haven't right. seen either. Oh, man. A little Christian Slater action. A little Christian Slater action, a little Nick Cage. <laughs> right. I mean, those can't be good movies. I think no. most people like Face Off, though, don't they? Yeah, I thought, I thought oh, they really? did. Oh, really? I remember. I've always heard I it so. was so ridiculous because the, the premise is just so stupid. <laughs> well, yeah, it is. That doesn't mean people can't like it. Yeah, <clears throat> I guess you're right. Okay, then Broken Arrow. Okay. <laughs> All right, there you go. I love that movie. <laughs> Tango and Cash. All right, moving on. <laughs> Over the top. <laughs> Over, the top. Over the top. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. That's funny. Well played. Sylvester. Uh, Cat Jack, is uh, Router going to play Destiny 2 with us? No. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Matt, uh, Matt Lighty, what geek slash nerd thing has just flown past you and makes you feel like you've lost your credibility as a geek slash nerd? For me, it's Doctor Who. I have tried watching the show yeah, from sure. different eras, cast, but hmm. could just never get into it. Yeah. I kind of agree with him on that. I just, I don't get into it either. I don't, I don't understand it and yeah, it's, it's just not for me. Yeah. Right. Ed? Uh, I would say um, just the fantasy genre in general. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons and uh, you know, that type of stuff. I've, I've never really huh. been a huge fan of. There you go. But, but what about like, uh, but like Lord of the Rings and stuff? Do you hate that too? I don't hate it, but I just, I don't like, I didn't read the Similarian. Silmarillion. Silmarillion, like Chris did. What is I read that? the books and enjoyed the movies. It's kind of like... It's basically reading the uh, the encyclopedia about Lord of the Rings. Ooh, no. Lord, no, no way. <laughs> that's not what it yeah, is. Yeah, right. The dictionary uh, for Lord of the Rings. No, that sounds it's, terrible. That's not what it is. That sounds literally terrible. <laughs> Good thing, because that's not what it is. <laughs> Samwise Gadget. There it is. <laughs> and then it has the phonics falling out of it. That's the appendices that? of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Chris? Um, I, I'm going to say Harry Potter. Because I just never really oh, okay. got into it. I, I mean, I don't hate it by any means, but and I didn't read the books, but I watched most of the movies, or at least most parts of most of the movies, and I, I just know, I don't understand the infatuation with it. I mean, sure, it's fine, mm. but I just didn't do anything for me. You didn't want to read the encyclopedia for it? Nah. <laughs> um, Doctor Who's a good one, because I never got into that. I've just uh, never yeah, seen I've never... Doctor Who, so I, yeah, I, I kind of wanted to say that, but I, I've never checked it out so i can't maybe if i did i'd love it who knows yeah i doubt it <laughs> <laughs> i've seen a few and i'm like mm, i would say okay. a big bang theory oh no. yeah yeah okay there you go. i cannot yeah. stand that crap uh i can't either really i love it Let's see Ugh. but i haven't watched it in forever though yeah all right uh Kaboski, what is the one thing that you own that your wife knows not to touch Ooh. Probably the consoles. <laughs> well, that, yeah, but that's not like a nose not to touch. It's like wouldn't want to anyway. Right. Well, it's both. She's like, I'm not going to mess with it. And I don't want to mess with it because I know that's your thing. So <laughs> uh, uh, she knows not to touch. I don't know if I have anything. Yeah, I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't have anything. that's like, don't mess with this. Me either. I mean, there's definitely I mean, she's not going to touch the motorcycle on her own. Right. Well, that's true. But that's not like you better not. It's just like she wouldn't. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I'll say that the bike. I'm yeah. I mean that's the thing. Like I I wish Lauren would pick up a controller. But it, it'll never yeah. happen. It'd One be more. hot and everything. Yeah, it'll be hot and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So I don't have anything. Um, but the one thing that I do have is so our main computer is in my office because I'm the one who uses it ninety percent of the time. Mm -hmm. Stacy's most of the time just on an iPad, and that suffices for the stuff she needs. But every now and then she'll say, "Oh." Can I go use your computer for XYZ? And it's every time she asked me, I said, look, that is our computer. You can yeah. just go use it. You don't have to <laughs> yeah. ask my permission. Now, if you don't know where something is and need me to show you something, cool. I got no problem helping you. But I'm trying to break her of the, hey, don't ask permission because it's yours too. You know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Moving on to email. Chris Schultz. Hey, guys. I just finished Horizon. Great game. 
but I couldn't help but feel fatigued by a mechanic in the game, picking up items and crafting. I'm kind of overdoing this in games for a little bit. My mm. question is, uh, are there any aspects or mechanics in games you're getting tired of? Thanks for the show every week. Helps my night at work pass by. Let's go, pens. And in parentheses, but had to do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right, Chris. Stop it. It's a good series. I'll give it to you. Whatever. The stamina bar. Um, oh, yeah. Really? I'm stamina done with bar that stamina bar, man. Come on, dog. It's a video game. Uh, yeah, it depends it on what the game is. In real life, I have a stamina bar. It, it really depends <laughs> on what the game is. I, I kind of want to agree with you, but some games, I really don't I mind it. I couldn't stand it in Zelda. Yeah, I could see in mm. Zelda it being stupid. And then but... what was the other game that I just started up? That Does Horizon have one? No. A stamina bar? I don't think so. Man, I started I something else one. up real quick, and I was like, oh, a stamina bar again. I just can't remember what it was. Anyway, mm. I, I don't like stamina bar. It has it in, in Witcher, but it actually serves a decent purpose for your powers. It, it, you have to wait a little bit in order to use your powers again, I guess, for fairness sake. But Yeah, yeah. it's... Um, I, yeah. Some of the items in crafting, I actually enjoy that, but it can get like, oh, I got to get this and I got to get this. Like, it, I can see the fatigue in there, but it's still, it's, it's not something that I'm, it would prevent me from playing a game, that's for sure. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, it wouldn't prevent me from playing, yeah. Ed? I'm going to go with racing in non-racing games. Like I know in, in Watch Dogs, one of the side missions are you have to, you know, <laughs> race go-karts. That's and it's funny. Like, uh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah, sure. Huh, Chris? Um, I don't. There's not really one thing that I can think of. There's times where like the stamina is an issue for me. It kind of depends on the game. Um, and the same thing with crafting. Some games like Horizon, I didn't mind crafting at all. But then in other games, it, it definitely feels like a chore. Is it kind of is hit or miss for me? Interesting. Um, I don't really like. I don't like a game where if it's if it's a narrative and. Then all of a sudden it just throws you a puzzle just because we need to throw more time into this game. Like if the puzzle doesn't tie into the story in a way that makes sense, if it's just like, oh, now you're just giving me a thing to do to add longevity to your game. Right. I get very annoyed. Hmm. I, don't, I, I don't feel like do Uncharted was like that a little bit this go around. Really? I felt I, like well, they were just slightly, that, like... slightly, some of them were just felt slightly random. And I don't mean like the puzzle puzzles, but I mean like the go find the box and bring it over here kind of problem solving. Uh, mm. gotcha. I was like, okay, I, right. I gotta go find another box. I, I can't just jump up in that window. Why do I need to drag this box over? Like, give right, me a good gotcha. reason yeah. that I dragged this box over for literally just to get through this window. Yeah, yeah. you were over finding the random boxes. Yes. I remember that. Ugh. I will say I this say too. Some, sometimes <laughs> the game in game things are kind of. Well, for me, like Witcher and Gwent, like Gwent is a game in and of itself. And that would like if it's going to take too long to do it and gets me away from the story of the mission that I'm trying to do, I get I get impatient. I'm like, I'm just not going to do it. And that's why I didn't do Gwent. Now that Gwent is by itself, I could probably play it. But mm, if it's Gwent in awesome. the game and I know it, it would. Yeah, which you love. And I know that it would take a lot of time within the game. I get too impatient. So like a short little game, that's fine. I'm totally good with. But if it's going to take a while, I'm like, ah, just get me back to the mission that I'm working on. Yeah. So, mm. so good question. All right. Moving on to Facebook. Alejandro Grau broke out the barbecue last weekend for some carne asada and burgers. I love to grill. What's your favorite food or foods to grill in the summer? Mm. Man, if I knew how Chicken. to, if I, <laughs> Chicken. If I knew how Chicken. to do ribs right, Ooh, like, because yeah. my neighbor mm. showed me some kind of way where he kind of uses a combination of the oven and the grill to make the ribs, and he mm -hmm. made them for oh, us, nice. and those things, like, you couldn't even pick them up without them falling apart, and I was yeah, like, I oh, that. Lord, if I knew how to do that right, that'd be my favorite thing to grill, ribs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got a love affair going on with ribs right now, though, so you guys are yeah, about to see me great, eat a man. lot of ribs at E3. <laughs> nice <laughs> sweet we'll just call you sticky fingers exactly ed uh we've been on this year we've been on a kebabs kick where it's like steak Ooh, and yum. chicken and pineapple and so it's kind of like mixing everything i like yeah, grilled together mm -hmm. beautiful Love that chris um my favorite thing to grill is either steak or pork chops but mainly because they're the only ones that i feel like i do well almost every single time yeah. If it's a burger or a hot dog, I mean, you can't really screw them up. You can do it, but I don't ever feel like, man, I did a great job grilling these. But steak or pork chops, I feel like I do a pretty good job at it. So There you go. Nice. Nice. Good question. That's a fun one. Great question. That is a fun one. Uh, good summertime question. 
Uh, okay, moving on Facebook. Carl Clarabut. Oh, yeah. Hi, guys. Being from, being from England, there are certain things you should see. Is this the same Carl? See, like, it's the same Carl. Is this the same Carl? Yeah. It is the same Read Carl. Word for hey, word, he's going please. back to back. Just kidding. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm I'm, I am reading joking. it. Here we go. Carl, I'm, I'm reading it right joking. now. Please don't feel God. big. There it is. <laughs> Hi, guys. Being from England, there are certain things you should see, like Big Ben, Stonehenge, and so on. Mm. From an American's perspective, what places or things should you go see or have already been? Planning for a future trip. Thanks for the great mm. show. Mm. Wow. Things in America. You, I mean, America. People say uh, Grand Canyon. Yeah, really, definitely. Oh, it's beautiful. Hmm. Yeah, Grand Canyon, Yosemite. Really? Yep. Huh. Yosemite's cool. Times Square. Gonna, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, Times Square. Go take your picture with like a homeless Elmo. <laughs> yeah, New York. <laughs> what? <laughs> New York, Chicago, L.A. Any one of those cities. Nashville. Come on down. I don't know, Dallas, man. Come on down. It, it, like, if you were only going to see Fort a, Wayne, a Indiana, things, come would, on down. <laughs> <laughs> Billy's, Montana, come on up. Um, <laughs> <Billy's>. <laughs> the, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say to go see like Chicago. You think? Why? Yeah. Oh man, on the lake, it's beautiful. I've, mm, I like, haven't been to Chicago, but I keep hearing over and over how I need to get there and how great it is. Well, yeah, yeah I, I it think is for great. the setting, it's like you got Lake Michigan right the there. Is coming boom, from England, right there. And you yeah. say, all right. Give me some things to go see in America. I wouldn't be like, Chicago, go get shot yeah. real quick. Well, I mean, I, I think... I love, I love Chicago. It's a great city, but I don't know if I'd say go see it if you hadn't been before. Yeah. Like, if it's your first time to America, I, I don't know. I almost feel like we yeah. need more information because if you're... Unless you're independently yeah, wealthy, I'm, I mean, if you just say, I'm coming to America, it's like, <laughs> dude, America's big. You ain't going to just go from one side to the next. Like, well, you know, our dollars are right, yeah. in comparison. You know I, mean, I mean, so. And he is, he's mentioning like iconic things like Big Ben, Stonehenge. So I'm saying like, go to the Grand Canyon and see that. Yeah. Go mm-hmm. to Yellowstone National Park and see that. What's the waterfall? Um, Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls. Mm, yep. I hear that's off the just, chain. But what, what I'm saying is I feel like we need to pick a, re- like if we're saying New York, we need, we need to give him things in New York. Not well, we like, said Times Square. Well, yeah, but I'm just saying, I feel yeah, like Times you need Square to focus in on an area and not be like, oh, you can go to Yosemite, which is over here, but then you can go to Grand Canyon, or you go to the Florida Keys. It's like, those are opposite ends. He's probably not doing all of them. <laughs> well, yeah, we don't know where he's going, fine. though, so we're giving yeah, we him don't a know where he's going. He, and, and and I know. Yeah, and Stonehenge and Big Ben are not next to each other. Exactly. I know a lot of Brits that go from coast to coast, like they'll because they'll take like a two-week vacation, so they'll go from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast and, and go from there, so I'm, yeah. Go to Disney World. Go to New York. Go to Yeah, do they have a Nashville. Disney there in the UK? Or I guess they're not nope. the UK anymore. Do they still have Euro Disney? I don't know. I don't remember. Or did that go uh, under? I don't know. Disney is awesome. I don't know. It is pretty mm-hmm. cool. All right, good question, Carl. Thank you so much for that. Uh, <laughs> all right, we got... <laughs> Why are you laughing? We got... <laughs> yeah, man, why are you laughing? I just felt like Carl stir- stirred up something in all of us, and it's like, oh, let's just move on. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were fighting amongst <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Right, we'll, we'll, do, we'll do two more questions, because we know Mr. Chris has got to get out of here. Uh, uh, Twitter, at Voice by Nathan, just got back from seeing Wonder Woman. Was great, by the way. What female superhero would you like to see next on the big screen? Oh, jeez. Shoot, I really want to see that movie. I'm so uh-huh. glad it's doing well. That's awesome. I don't even know about any female superheroes. How uh, about Wonder Woman 2? Let's just do that. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know comics enough. I don't either. I don't I can't besides Catwoman, I can't think of a Yeah, she's a superhero I, which tanked. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Batgirl, Captain Marvel, there was some female Spider-Man woman. Spider-Woman. There was. There was. I don't I don't know what her name is. I know of them, but yeah, I'm the same as you guys. I don't read a lot of comics or anything, so I, I'm not super up on it. Yeah, it's so overtaken by men that it's hard for me to think yeah. of There's any a lot of X-Men ladies. women, but there's not very many X-Men movies that don't have... I mean, I guess there is like a Wolverine movie. How about movie Storm? You know what? I'll go so with Rogue. Be a Storm movie. Rogue, yeah. I, Ooh, Rogue, I, li- yeah. I really liked Rogue as a kid. So if Rogue had her own That's cool. movie, I'd, I'd go see there that. There you go. Yeah. Nice. Nice. All right, final question. At Haley Zorrell, is anyone wanting to see another infamous game at E3? That would be a heck yes, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I want to see seconds. I want to see uh, Sucker Punch do something else. Yeah, I'm kind of yes. ready to move on from Infamous. I don't mind if they don't revisit it in like the next five to six years, but the next thing I want to see is something brand new from them. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that. But it would be cool if they did something. Yeah, I wouldn't be angry. 
Yeah. No, no I wouldn't be angry. I'd be, I'd be, I would be slightly disappointed though. Mm. It just yeah, seems like too many in a row. Yeah. Make the call, Stancil. <laughs> yeah. Make it so. Make it so, Stancil. I mean, you're not there, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know somebody. Yeah. That's right. That's it for the questions. Yeah, thank you guys. Um, the question of the week for you guys. Have you ever taken off work or skipped school to play a video game? Chris? Yes. <laughs> Which one? Um, I've taken or do you off not for, want to say? I'm just kidding. No, no, no. I've taken <laughs> off right. for, uh, to do Metal Gear games before when I was a kid. Uh, and yep. then I, I took off there for a couple of years when I would go to the midnight releases of the Call of Duty launches. And so mm-hmm. I just wouldn't go to work the next day because I'd be up playing. Um, there you go. That's all I can think of. I haven't done it in a while. Ed? No, I don't think I have. Tim? I'm my own boss, so I can kind of take off whenever I want. And I did last week and played a little Witcher for like two hours in the middle of the day. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I know. You took it doesn't off the feel day like of work skipping to work. play two hours of Witcher? Yeah, that's not taking off work. Oh, that's no. lunch. Yeah. Well, I haven't, I mean, I haven't taken off a full day of work to play games, but um, I've, I've taken bits and pieces. There you go. Yeah. M- I, more so than probably the average person because they're either at a job and can't necessarily right. come back and play for two hours. So that's what yeah. I'm saying. I've I done the you. same. Yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I don't think I have either. I want to believe that I did when I was a teenager and was like, ooh, I, can't, I really want to play this and I'm going to just kind of like skirt all my responsibilities. Just can't mm-hmm. remember if you did Yeah, I just can't remember, but it definitely feels like something I would have done in my teenage years. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the best? Just skirting responsibilities and playing games. It I feels good it. now. It definitely right. would have yeah. felt good then. I think it feels even better now because you're like, I've got a lot more responsibilities, <laughs> right. but I don't want to do them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but back then, like, I, you know, like same with you, Tim. Like, and even with Chris, with having a regular job, the most regular job out of all of us. Like, we all have like bosses and situations we cannot kind of work around. Back then, I wasn't the master of my own domain. And still mm-hmm. skirted the responsibility. Yeah. That's right. awesome. That's true. real good. Anyway, let us know. Have you ever taken off work, skip school for video games? And I can't wait to hear the answers because I know there's some jokes out here that should have been fired. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe after we read them next right. week. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just use your Twitter <laughs> handle. You don't worry about it. Yeah. Stick with us. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I'm Gabe Patillo. That is Tim Router. That is Ed Placencia. That is Chris McCracken. And we are married to the games and going to E3. And we about this thing. Peace.